And we're with you here from Blue Wahoo Stadium. Will Kennedy and Jamie Smith ready for some college football on a warm Saturday evening from Pensacola, Florida. Mississippi College in town to face your UWF Argonauts here at Blue Wahoo Stadium. Second of three straight at home for Coach Pete Shinnick's squad. They come in two and one. Mississippi College comes in two and one to this. Both teams on two game winning streaks after losing their opening game. The teams are getting set to take the field. We're set for a 6.05 kick here in Gulf South Conference play. Tonight, it'll be Mississippi College in the white uniforms with the blue helmets, and much to our chagrin, UWF will be playing in the green uniforms. We'll see those in just a moment. And we say that because it's difficult to see the numbers. They are gray on those green jerseys. So, Jamie, your eyes are younger than mine. I'm going to have to count on you a little bit tonight. It is. But the sun is coming down, so it may be a little bit easier, but we'll see how it goes with the lights when those get on, too. Uh, essential to a broadcast like this, we do have binoculars in this bag, and they may come in handy tonight. We expect to see offensive fireworks most likely from both sides of the football, both teams, because different offenses but very dynamic in their own right. Exactly, and, and you just start with the Mississippi College offense, and we spoke about it on the radio show, but you go to that quarterback, uh, Dedrick Hawthorne, only 5'7", five, 5'8", five, 170 pounds, but the kid can move. He's electric. Uh, I, I'm honestly think he could be a track star if he wanted to go out and try out for that sport, but uh, he can move, and the defense is going to have to uh, contain him within that pocket and make him beat you with the arm. If, he can, if you can make him, um, if, he, if he does beat you with the arm, well, hats off to him. But Hawthorne is going to have to beat you with his arm. You can't let him use his feet, get out of the pocket and play scramble football. That way his receivers can get down the field and basically he can pay, play uh, backyard football. It becomes him. a scramble drill. He's not the most accurate passer, number eight, Dietrich Hawthorne, but he has a strong arm. And when he gets out and gets loose behind the line of scrimmage, he can chunk the ball downfield, and they've got a couple guys. Cole Rotenberry, number one, you look for him as well. Teams are getting ready to take the field. There are those green jerseys, and here come your Argos. Really one of the cool spect spectacles in college football, and the atmosphere here in just the fourth season for this program, really fantastic for these home games. One thing we saw right there, we touched on it in the pregame show on the radio, Number two, you saw Andre Duncan was not in pads. He will not play this week. Really kind of the heart of this UWF defense. Yeah, and you usually see Duncan the first one running out of the gate there. But uh, out with the hand injury, and hopefully we'll see him in a couple of weeks. This team is going to need him as we continue to get deeper and deeper into GSC play. But I think they're athletic enough, and I think they're ready to go for today's ballgame. This, of course, as I mentioned, is the second in three straight at home. Delta State comes in next week for homecoming as we're getting set for the coin toss here. So really where you have to take the opportunity to win these games at home, especially as you get into Gulf South Conference play, you can't afford not to. Yeah, definitely. And, I mean, the, the schedule only gets tougher. Mississippi College is a great team, but we know what we have going forward in uh, West Georgia and Valdosta State, who's ranked number one in the country, fresh off the national championship. Uh, it just gets tougher from here. I believe that is Hal Marcus, one of uh, UWF's donors, the Hal Marcus College of Science and Engineering. He's out there as the honorary captain for the coin toss tonight. So uh, honoring all parts of the university. There's the handshakes from the two teams. I really feel like we saw last year over in Clinton, Mississippi, a really good game from these two teams. UWF led all the way through, never trailed in that game, but it was close. And it was really Dietrich Hawthorne making those plays to keep the game close. Uh, many times, kind of like a, a magic trick where you thought he was down, you thought somebody had him, he spins out and he gets loose and then he makes something happen. They have to avoid that tonight. Coach Shinnick's squad, Coach Darian Doolin, the defensive coordinator, they got to make that work for them. And then really, if I'm the, I said this last week when we were wrapping up last week's game with Lynchburg, if I'm the defensive coordinator for Mississippi College, I had a lot of sleepless nights this week because I look over at this UWF offense and I cannot figure out who I need to stop because they can kill you in a million different ways. It's just so many ways. You, got, you have Quentin Randolph, Tate Latio, Rand, uh, Rodney Coates, and then – a guy who I want to see get going today, who I think can have a big advantage on the ground, is Anthony Johnson Jr. Uh, I hope he can take advantage of that uh, Mississippi College defensive line. They don't have a guy over 300 pounds, so I'm wondering if UWF can kind of manipulate that and open up, open up some holes for Johnson. We saw Javon Newton last week run well, Jaden Gardner run well, and then really impressed with Shamari Mason late in that game with a different kind of pace. Uh, his athletic ability, his stop and start, his ability to shake people off. So same kind of situation we said for Mississippi College. you got some running backs that can make some things happen. Interesting note for you, Derek Hawthorne, 
number 13, the brother of Dietrich Hawthorne, is a defensive back for this Mississippi College team. He scored a touchdown last week. He had an interception pick six, as did UWF last week. Uh, the Argos scored just about every way you can imagine against Lynchburg. So it'll be interesting to see the Hawthorns on both sides of the ball. We're getting ready to kick this thing off. Mississippi College will kick it to UWF, and we are underway. This one hammered, and it's going to sneak out. Couldn't tell from our vantage point if it got out in the end zone. It looks like it is. It's going to be a touchback to bring things back and get the Argonaut offense. I, I think this is a good thing, Jamie. You want to kind of get that offense on the field and get them cranked up. Definitely. And you got Reed on the field now. You want to get him out going and going fast. And uh, I think if they can get off to a fast start here and Reed can click here with a couple short passes to get it going early, uh, they'll, they'll be in a good position here. That was Drake McCarter, a senior, kicking things off for Mississippi College. He'll handle the kicking and punting duties, number 18. So Austin Reed in at your quarterback. Sensational. The redshirt freshman, the transfer from Southern Illinois, number 14, ready to take this snap. Anthony Johnson starts in the backfield with him and takes the handoff. We saw this last week, misdirection. Johnson dances and really was probably one step away from making something happen, a big play. Yeah, he picks up about five on that play. Maybe they'll give him six. But uh, like I said, uh, if, he, if you can get Johnson going today in that stable of running backs we have, it can be a lot. It can, be, uh, it can open up that passing game. I thought a bird just flew in our booth. It's a gigantic moth that just landed on the wall behind me. Very manageable when you can go with second and five or second and four. Helps your offense, and everything's in the playbook. Johnson, again, he's going to make something happen. Up the middle, tough running. It's going to take four or five chalk toss to bring him down. First down, UWF. And another good run. They give an inside handoff to Johnson on that inside. Those old linemen blocking great early here, opening up a hole for him, able to burst through there for the first down. Josh Miller, one of the safeties, leads the team, or right up there in the lead in tackles, gets in on that action at the end. So a first down after two consecutive running plays, and I think that's what you're going to see, and Coach Shinnick talked about it, is establishing the run early in this game, which will, of course, open up your play action passing down the road. So here you go, first down in their own end, first drive of the game. Reed will look to pass for the first time, throws that one into the dirt. Two, two guys covering his receiver, Tate Latio, out there. Yeah, and they were covering Latio pretty well. Uh, as Latio ran out to the flat there, they had the backer, and the cornerback who was helping over and under there on that throw. Probably a good decision by Reed to throw that ball Sometimes low. Sometimes just put it in the dirt and, and take the next play. Last week, of course, despite the 69 points that were scored, 69-0 in the game over Lynchburg, the first offensive play was a deep interception by Austin Reed, underthrown a little. Despite that, they still scored a ton of points. They'll run on second and 10, dancing through and picking up some yardage. There's a new running back in the game. Is that Newton in the game? Yes, yeah, like Jaden Gardner. Oh, it's Gardner. Gardner's checked in number 21. He'll get some positive yardage. They'll give him about four, maybe five on the carry. And there they go. I mean, rotating those backs in there early. We get Jaden Gardner's first look of the ball game and get, does what he can. Picks up about five on the play. Uh, not a lot of running room, but does what he can. Puts UWF in a third down and manageable situation. I, I love the push that you're seeing already from this offensive line. They dominated last week, and then you kind of wonder – that was against the underpowered, undersized Lynchburg team. But Coach Shinnick was telling us during the week that this is a little bit of an undersized line for Mississippi College, and he feels that offensive line will have an advantage. Yeah, none of those guys over 300 pounds, so we'll see how that goes for Mississippi College going forward. Something going on here. Coach Shinnick did not like what he saw, so he's going to take a quick time out there and kind of get his offense over on the sideline and, and figure out what they need to do. They're looking at a third and five officially. This is, uh, you know, the kind of the start you want to be able to put the ball on the ground, Jamie, and pick up some positive yardage, and you just feel like it's it's a matter of time till they'll they'll look to throw the ball down the field. Especially, and if you can get that ground game going early and continue to have it going, uh, that just weighs on that defense as the ball game as it gets later into the ball game. Because I know in my playing days, around the third and fourth quarter, you start, uh, you come out, you wanting to hit those guys hard and fast, and and then. Third quarter and fourth quarter gets around. You're like, okay, I don't, I, I'm kind of waiting for this game to end now. I think depth is going to be big, as warm as it is. Across the UWF offensive front, we get a chance here to set the offensive line. Left tackle Sam Antoine, big number 52. Left guard 61, Joe Wintrick. The center is number 65, Devin Gibson, a senior as well. Three seniors there. Mike Dillow, the right guard, number 74, is a junior. And Jacob Bruce at right tackle, number 50, is a red shirt freshman. We don't get to talk about them enough and say their names, but just so you'll know who's opening these holes for the running back. Third and five, Reed looks to throw. Plenty of time, and he's looking deep down the field. He's got a man, and another brilliant catch from Quentin Randolph. Austin Reed put that ball on a dime right over Q's shoulder, and Q makes another catch. 
and the playmaker, we can't get enough of him. Quentin Randolph runs a wheel, real route uh, type route out of the backfield, and when man coverage, Reed puts the ball right on the money, and the Argos are knocking on the door here early. Just that quick, they move into Mississippi College territory. Ball is going to be spotted at the 26-yard line, so not quite to the red zone yet. They'll gain a 30 on that last one, so a third and five. Hey, I'll take a 30-yard completion every day. First down, Argos threatening as Jamie mentioned on their first possession of the game. They'll go back to the ground, a little misdirection. Cutting it over is Gardner. Gardner with another positive gain on first down. You love everything you're seeing from this offense to start the game. Yeah, they run a stretch play out to the outside towards the field here, and they give Boundary a little room to work with. Able to stretch it out to the outside and cut it back in for a nice gain of about six on that play. Excellent job by Jacob Bruce, number 50 over there, sealing that edge on the outside and giving Gardner some room to run. Gardner will stay in the backfield. Three receivers out to Austin Reed's left as they overload the far side of the field. They'll go right back to the run game up the middle. Gardner, depending on the spot, is going to be a little short of the first down there. It looks like he'll be maybe two or three yards short here on the third down. The hole closed pretty quickly there on that carry as they try to go into the middle of that line. Good job jumping in and getting a hold of somebody. That's number 54, Dalton Frederick, a redshirt junior for Mississippi College from defensive end. That'll bring up a third down. Last third down, 30-yard completion. This one, a third and two, so a little bit different situation. We got a jump over on the right side. Looked like Bruce got started a little early. You know, offensive linemen get excited, Jamie. Yeah, and that's going to be Bruce, the freshman over there. Um, still got some things to learn, but he's been pretty good um, as the season progressed. But, uh, you know, freshman mistakes do happen. That'll back it up, make it a third and seven. Yeah, Jacob, Jacob Bruce has really become the solid right tackle out there. It was uh, Ethan Cruz to start the year, but some injury problems opened up an opportunity for Jacob Bruce, and you like to see a young player. You hate to see that happen to a veteran where they have an injury issue, but Bruce has stepped in and done a nice job. Of course, minus that penalty. Third and seven now. Changes the play call probably a little bit. Four wide receivers out in formation. Reed with time to throw. He's going to scramble. He's got a man on his back and pushes one up. He gets it to Johnson. Johnson makes some people miss, and he's going to pick up the first down. Flags come in late on this one. It may be a block in the back. Yeah, I think they're going to get uh, Karan Ashley on the block in the back there. Tough for a wide receiver. Was that Grant or Ashley? It may have been Kevin Grant over there. Tough for a wide receiver to make that play, but what a, look at this athletic play. <laughs> kind of a jump push pass from Austin Reed, and then Johnson making some stuff happen. Why, wow, you know, it looks like on second look, you're right, it's Cron Ashley, but it looks like he pulled up and pulled his hands back right there at the end. Yeah, it looks like he was trying to. It may have been that the official had already made up his mind that it was going to happen before it actually did happen. So we went from a third and two to a third and seven. Now we're going to back this thing up to a third and about 13. Yeah. It's going to be a long one, third and 13 or third and 12. So after moving the ball effectively, bang, bang, bang down the field, we've, we've put it in reverse and backed it out of the driveway. May still be in field goal range. We'll see here uh, what they pick up. Speaking of which, we do have a situation, a, a different look at kicker for UWF tonight. We'll set that when the time comes. Reed with time to throw. Another strong throw, and what a catch. Kevin Grant goes up. And the big fella at about 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, just with one hand says, I'll take that. <laughs> big man Kevin Grant. Take a look at this replay. Makes a great catch. Just the regular fly route, and Kevin Grant just says, I'll outman you on this one. Puts the big mid up there. I talked to Kevin. It's going to be on the Coach Shinnick Show this week. We sat down and did an interview, a kind of a feature on him. And uh, he says he loves those jump balls. He loves that ball up over the defensive back's head and a chance to make a play. That's only, I think, his sixth catch of the season, but most of them have been – for damage. Inside the red zone now, ball about the 10, right at the 10 yard line. That'll bring up first and goal to go for the Argos. And Grant has man to man over here again. Reed looks the other way, tries a quick slant inside to Tate Latio. The throw is a little short. Yeah, I kind of wonder if he would have looked over and seen that single coverage on the short side of the field with Kevin Grant if Reed might have thought about checking off and going that way. Yeah, because I mean, the DB that was covering when Rogers, number 22 for Mississippi College, is only. <laughs> Five nine, one seventy five. So, Grant clearly has the advantage over there if they continue to go man. They'll bring Rodney Coates out and bring Jacuri Jackson on at tight end. It's a little bit different looking formation. They'll put three receivers out to Austin Reed's left. Anthony Johnson is the single back in the backfield. Here we go. Second down, goal to go from the ten yard line. Reed making an adjustment at the line of scrimmage. He'll go out of the shotgun. 
Three seconds here. Play clock winding down. He gets the snap off. Quick throw. And that one just a little off the mark looking inside to Grant again. And kind of lucky that one may, maybe didn't ricochet into the defensive back. Yeah, I think that was the situation where Cameron Grant had to return into a defensive player. He actually it, got off his hands. Yeah, that was a weird-looking throw. It's like it, it, the nose of the football was down, and it was sinking quickly like a, like a pitcher in baseball. If you throw a cut fastball, it's just going to dive in. That, that one had a little a funky spin on it. Would you, would you have swung over the top? I uh, probably would have. <laughs> Two receivers on each side in the backfield. Single back as Reed awaits the snap on third and goal to go from the 10. Reed with plenty of time. Offensive line doing a great job. He's got Johnson out of the backfield. Catches it. It's loose. They're going to call this a fumble. And Austin Reed's going to step up and make a heck of a tackle on the sideline. I don't know about that one. Looks like an incomplete pass. I think they'll go back and I don't know if they'll go back and look at that one. I don't know. It looks like they're going to give him the fumble. So, you know, definitely we're in field goal range there at the 10-yard line. Let's take a look at the replay here. What is the catch? That's a debate these days. I don't know that he ever had control of that football. You see it on the replay. He was still yeah. turning. Tough. I don't think he made, you know, if the definition is that you make a football move after the catch, he certainly didn't make a football move yet. Yeah, I wouldn't classify that as a fumble. I think that's going to be a missed call there by the refs. These things happen in the course of, of every football game, and then the next thing becomes, can your defense step up and choke out Mississippi State here and, you know, take away the momentum that they got from really kind of a gifted turnover. So here you go. From about the 25, their own 25, here's Dietrich. Back to pass, and Hawthorne gets strip sacked from behind, and UWF can't come up with the football. But what a play from the defense on the outside. Is that Trent Archie jumping uh, in there? That's going to be Mobile native Trent Archie yeah. getting into the action early. Darian Doolin dials up blitz right off the top. He gets bumped by a blocker, but not enough to – oh, that one could have. It was on the ground, and everybody had a shot at it. Big fella falls yeah. on top of that one. Is that from over at one of the tackle positions or actually the left guard, Cordell Burge, on top of the football? Yeah, Jordan Wright, the running back, was just a little too late to pick up Trent Archie on that blitz, and Archie was able to get that paw on the ball. Loss of eight on the play, so that'll bring up second down and 18. Really down in distance is uh, always good to, to put him in a dis disadvantage, but not really the be-all, end-all with a quarterback like this. A short completion, that's Rotenberry with the catch on the throw from Hawthorne. Cole Rotenberry, number one, will be the main target for Dietrich Hawthorne. You see the rollout. This is what they'll do a lot with him is put him on the move. You scramble him out of the pocket, get the pocket moving there for Hawthorne and go into his right as he likes to go when he's on the move. And Trent Archie does a great job of basically relating to the quarterback, not directly attacking him once he got out of the pocket, but basically just, you know, leveling with him and staying equal until he made, until he made that throw. Just keep him moving, right? Third and 12 now. Big down for UWF, a chance to get the football back, get off the field. Inside handoff is going to pick up some positive yardage, and the pile moves, but not enough for a first down. They'll be about three or four yards short after the gang of UWF tacklers in green get in and make the stop. So an important stand after the turnover deep in Mississippi College territory will force a punt. The offense will get the football back. Yeah, great job by the defense there. Trent Archie kicking it off, setting the tone early with the strip sack, and the defense getting that offense off of the field. Really, yeah, that first play, when you can do something like that on first down and put an offense like this in a hole, they don't really throw the ball in chunks enough maybe to pick up 18 yards. They need to control that first and 10 yeah, situation. Yeah, and it disrupts that rhythm also. So back to punt, as we mentioned, special teams all handled by Drake McCarter, number 18, he's the kicker and the punter. Good driven kick here. Fair catch is called for by Birch, Dimitri Birch over there, number eight. He'll make the catch, and he'll set his offense up in their own end at the 25-yard line. So, really, we saw the offense drive down the field. A couple penalties that set them back, but they were able to pick up a first down. Instead, we'll take a break here and get you set again for this offense coming our way next as UWF will be on the prowl again. You're watching and listening to the UWF Sports Network. Success isn't measured by fame or fortune. It's measured by time and the amount of times you influence others to be better, to transform something small into something spectacular. Success is measured by the impact you make. What impact will you make? The University of West Florida. No limits.
What does Argo Spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pre-game grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. Missouri. Back with you here, Blue Wahoo Stadium in Pensacola, Florida. Will Kennedy and Jamie Smith, UWF football, Mississippi College. In Pensacola on a Saturday evening, 7.43 left to play in the first quarter of a scoreless football game here in Gulf South Conference action. Here we go, first down and 10 from their own 25. UWF goes to the ground again. And Gardner, some tough running again, but another positive play on a first down. Yeah, misdirection here by UWF running that comeback, uh, that comeback uh, route there for Gardner, or the run play. And uh, Gardner able to pick up about four on that play. Gang, gang of tacklers, including Jaleen Brown, number 40, the linebacker in to make the stop there. So a gain of about four on first down. Sets up a second and six. Right down the field, great first possession. You get to the 10-yard line, you got first and goal from the 10, and you come away with no points after a fumble by Anthony Johnson that really probably wasn't a fumble, should have been an incomplete pass, but those are the breaks of the game. So here we go. Second down, another carry by Gardner. This time, not much running room as he tested that left side. And the Choctaws had that one sniffed out. Jumping in is Quentin Frazier, number five, on the tackle. Yeah, we're trying to get him Gardner on the on the outside with that stretch play. Just nowhere to go. Mississippi College was able to attack up field that time, and and uh, Cole was able to, or I'm sorry, Frazier was able to bring him down. That'll bring up a third and six. Third and a long six now. Probably a chance for Austin Reed to air this thing out. As Coach Pete Shinnick. Not shy at all about letting his quarterback throw the football. So here we go. Big play in their own end. Looking to get that drive going again after the stop last time. Going deep down the field. And this one is overthrown to Rodney Coates. So just that quick, a three and out. And they have to punt the football back. That'll bring out Dawson Hamlin to punt, by the way. And uh, Dawson Hamlin, he had one of those weeks last week that, you know, I don't know if a punter, do you like that or not like that? He didn't punt once in the football game. Yeah. Coach Shinnick told me, he said, that's a perfect night for, for me as far as my punter's concerned, but maybe not as a, I think you want to get out there and kick the ball. Yeah, definitely not. He is uh, definitely rested, to say the least. Hamlin's been really, really good this year as far as the kicking game is concerned and really one of, you know, positive. He's able to really pin the other team deep from time to time. So we'll see his first kick in, in a couple of weeks. This one a little bit wobbly. Going to take a UWF bounce and bounce deep into Mississippi College territory down to inside the 20. So another great kick from Dawson Hamlin. He's going to set up the Choctaws in their own end. We'll take a break here. No score in this one. It's about six minutes left in the first quarter of the ball game. UWF and Mississippi College in action. You're watching and listening to the UWF Sports Network. What does Argo Spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pre-game grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. Sandra, how do I turn this thing on? 
Welcome back in here to Blue Wahoo Stadium. Will Kennedy and Jamie Smith with you. You're listening to UWF football on ESPN Pensacola, 1330 AM, 99.1 FM, WEBY, Milton, Pensacola. And watching as well on Cox Sports TV and your TV, your TV Florida. So UWF with, it, with their second possession, very unlike the first one, Jamie, a disappointment of three and out after driving to the 10. This game really should be three and oh. And there you see the numbers on Dietrich Cawthorn, the Mississippi College quarterback. He is dynamic. You have to bottle him up. They do not do that on first down as he's able to, on a designed run, dance around and pick up about nine. Yeah, Hawthorne shows you his athleticism. They are able to take the ball in that quarterback keeper in the option, able to pick up about nine on that play, shaking past a couple defenders. You really feel like this game should be at least three nothing. Good job blocking up front by this Mississippi College front. This game should at least be three nothing at minimum, and instead it's scoreless. And so momentum, which clearly on the home team side for the UWF Argos, is now kind of hanging in the balance again. Second and one, this is a down that a team like Mississippi College and a quarterback like Hawthorne likes and can do damage on. They're going to go with the quick inside handoff. Can't really tell they're going to give him the spot probably enough to get to the first down and move the chains. Yeah, and great job by Kendrick Bradley. I believe was the first one there. Great eyes by him to able to see that quarterback running back exchange and hold that yeah, uh, Ken, to a minimal game. Kendrick Bradley's a big fella stepping up into that hole and along with uh, 97 in there. Getting that push, T.J. Kelly, and they're able to stop that one cold. But enough for the first down. They only needed one. They got just at one. So the Mississippi College will move the sticks for the first time tonight. First down and 10, ball out just short of the 30 now. Some movement in the UWF front, and they're going to collapse the pocket, and there's that pursuit. Good job of keeping Hawthorne in the middle and then coming up field to get him. And you can see that. That time they brought a backer out, and it looks like that was uh, – looked like Bradley, Bradley again, again. Yeah, Bradley. on the outside. And they brought him there to basically refrain from Hawthorne to escape out of the pocket. And all he had was up the middle. And that held him to a gain of one in that play. So great job, great job by Coach Doolin in that defense. If you listen to us on the radio, you know how Jamie and I feel about the green jerseys. And, and so 13 and 19 become very difficult to tell the difference. <laughs> and so the replay here with the TV broadcast is essential tonight. Here you go, second down and really just about 10, a long nine. This play is going to get to the corner. Nice job of pitching the football off by Hawthorne, and that's going to be good for a first down. Running the football there is Jamori Mark, who one of the leaders on this team in rushing, 72 yards coming into the night. He scored three touchdowns on the season. That's really classic option right there that last second pitch by Hawthorne to Mark. Yeah, they fake the dive play, and then Hawthorne pitches it out to Mark, and another speedy receiver takes it out to the outside there and is able to pick up enough for the first down. So two first downs. All of a sudden, Mississippi College moving the ball out near midfield. Ball spotted just at the 40-yard line. We'll see what the Choctaws draw up on first down. Another quick pitch out of the option. It's Mark again. Mark with running room, and all of a sudden, as he stretches out at the end, may have got close to the first down. They're going to mark him just short, but you're starting to see the quick movement from this offensive line. It's not really power football. It's a lot of quick trapping and moving across the front. Yeah, and it's really just eye discipline on the defensive side. But that time they get a, a bunch of blockers ahead out of Mark, and uh, one of those, Drew Kerger, they able to do a great job, and they pick up about nine on that game. These first down gains of nine yards are making it tough on this UWF defense as the Choctaws now have moved the ball just shy of midfield in their own end. Second down and one again, another quick handoff, dancing along the line, getting strung out, and then a gang of UWF tacklers get in and stop Jordan Wright. Really, the, the rushing leader came in at 113 yards on the season. Doesn't get much there. In fact, he's going to be short, maybe push back about a half yard. That'll bring up a third and one or third and two. Yeah, they hand it off to, to Wright that time, and they actually lose maybe a yard on that play. We'll see what they go here with third and two. You mentioned discipline, Jamie. Good job of that front of staying where they're supposed to be and and keeping those holes closed. Here you go, third and two. Big play for both sides. Hawthorne steps out, checks the, the bench as a change of play maybe. Clock is under, play clock under 10 now, five. Hawthorne will get the snap off. He'll hand off to Wright. Wright's going to go through the hole and get the first down. Yeah, it looks like he just got enough for the first down there. Yeah, they will move the chains on the inside handoff to Wright. Argos. Shuffling some guys in and out across the, the front and the linebackers, but you see there just enough of a hole. Really good job of closing it down, and you see trying to strip the football there, jumping in at the end, but not enough to hold them from picking up another first down. 
And that's the staple of this option offense. I mean, you have the option to go up the middle, bounce it out to the outside, and that's why it takes so much discipline to, to stop these things. That was Durante Jordan jumping in there, backup linebacker tonight, trying to strip that football at the end of that play. Hawthorne looks to throw on first down. He's got a man mark in the flat. He's going to pick up some positive yardage before he's finally chopped down by Trent Archie. Right now, whatever they're calling is working. You know, they're, they're dialing up some different looks and some different plays, and it's, it's creating positive yardage, especially on first down. Yeah, they give, uh, they give, they give Hawthorne a two-read look here. He sees the post. He sees that's covered up, and then he has Mark on the outside in that flat. Goes to him, and he's able to pick up about, about seven or eight. Yeah, they're going to give him a gain of seven officially on the scoreboard. Second down and three now. The Choctaw is kind of in control of tempo here. The Argo defense definitely on their heels on this second possession for Mississippi College. Looks like a run blitz coming, but bouncing to the outside, another toss sweep and getting to the outside there is somebody who's not, not in the too deep depth chart because it's going to be that kind of night. Uh, that's, is that Quentin Young or Quentin, yeah, Young. Quentin Young getting the, the handoff there? So you're going to see a lot of depth at this running back position. Quentin Young doesn't even figure in too deep at the three different running back positions, so that's how deep they go on this team yep. at that position. Yeah, quick pitch that time, and they just beat UWF to the corner there and is able to pick up the first down. There we are again. So the ball now sitting at the 31, at the UWF 31. Choctaw is now threatening that red zone. Another, another test on that right side. Getting around and picking up some positive yardage is Jordan right on first down. They'll give him about four or five. This is frustrating, I know, Jamie, from a defensive side of the ball when you just kind of you're on your heels and you're just trying to figure out how do, how do we what do we do to stop this? Yeah, you're really you're really reeling at this point, and I mean, you, <laughs> Mississippi College just rolling in and out with those fresh body, bodies. It makes it tough. That brings us to the end of the first quarter. Scoreless game. But the Mississippi College Choctaws are threatening here in this Gulf South Conference clash. We will see. Can they find these first points of the game? You're watching Argo football on the UWF Sports Network. For those who sweat in determined pursuit, and those who meet the morning with a firm handshake and a smile and breathe between stages of unwavering effort. Andrews Institute, for those who move. Hey, who are you? Oh, hey, Jeff, I'm a car thief. What? I'm here to steal your car because, well, that's my job. What? 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 <laughs> it happens. So get off stage. I'd be better protected from mayhem, like me. Mayhem is everywhere. So get an Allstate agent. In Pensacola, call Melissa Keener. You can't stop it. That undeniable charge. So bright. So loud. It rips through the clutches of mediocrity. It breaks down walls, blazes past old ways of thinking. It's creativity, pure electric energy. What will you do with it? The University of West Florida, no limits. It's a game day special. They're always the fan favorite. Back with you at Blue Wahoo Stadium, Will Kennedy, Jamie Smith. Scoreless football game, Gulf South Conference action. University of West Florida Argonauts hosting the Mississippi College Choctaws. The Argos got down on their first possession to the 10-yard line, came away empty-handed after a turnover. Mississippi College threatening for their first time tonight. Ball inside the UWF 30, second down and seven. Been a dominant drive on the ground, mainly for Mississippi College, and it'll be Dietrich Hawthorne, the quarterback, keeping on this one. You see how quick he is, Jamie, as he picks up just shy of the first down. Yeah, he gets the defense flowing. I mean, he moves to the outside so fast. You get those big bodies flowing out in space, and then he cuts back inside for about four on that play to set up a third and two for him. And able to stop on a dime there. They give him five on the official. That'll be third down and two to go now as he steps out. Hawthorne does from quarterback, looks over to the sideline, checks the play call. Big play here for this UWF defense. 
as they are on their heels, breathing hard, trying to figure out how to stop this Choctaw option attack. Hand off and cutting into the backfield, making contact and able to bring the runner down. He was, I, that could have been a loss of th two or three. Instead, he was able to fall forward. He's not going to get the first down, but he's going to be close. Yeah, it's going to be fourth and inches here. I, th I thought it was going to be a tackle for loss there. Just couldn't wrap him up. Who was that flying in there? Looked like Trent Archie get blitzing in on the, on, the, on, the, on the backside there, able to get in the backfield early. Run blitz across the back there. It was either Richardson or Archie. Couldn't really tell with these, with these jerseys. So what do you do if you're Mississippi College? It looks like they're not going to send on the kicking team. Why would you at this point, the way you've been running the football? But this could be a big, big play. Fourth, and it's, it's officially a yard. It may be a little shorter than that. Yeah, we'll see if Coach Doolin decides to dial up some pressure. Mississippi College has been successful running the ball up the middle here. That was Archie with the tackle on the last play. Uh, timeout. Yeah, this, you take a timeout here if I miss if Mississippi College just to find out what are we going to do? What's the right play call? We'll take a break with the two teams still scoreless here in Blue Wahoo Stadium. You're watching and listening to Argo Football on the UWF Sports Network. What does Argo Spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pregame grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at penair.org slash about us. Look at that. Five glorious inches of Whataburger. Fresh 100% beef stacked high with melted cheese and fresh cut veggies. But what if it's too much fresh beef? Stacked too high with too much melted cheese and too many fresh cut veggies. Well, we have a four inch burger like a lot of other places. We just call it a junior. Good thing there's a burger made just for you. Good thing there's Whataburger. We jump right back in here as they're set to snap this fourth and one. Big play. First down and then some in for the touchdown for Mississippi College. Sneaking out on that for They sold out to stop it instead. It's going to be Jordan Wright taking that thing into the end zone for the first points of this game. Yeah, and they sold out up the middle there. And all Wright did was bounce it out to the outside and let his legs do the rest of the work for him there. It's, I'll tell you what, it is tough to do what he just did as a running back, to be that patient when it's fourth and one. And you know if you get caught behind the line, that's the end of the drive. Instead, he's, he does that, trusts his blockers, and gets it to go on to the extra point. It's up, and it is good. And there we are, 7 nothing, just like that. So a strong start for the Argos, flips over and becomes an answer from Mississippi College, 7 nothing now, 13-22 left to play in this one in the first half here in Pensacola on the UWS Sports Network. For those who sweat in determined pursuit and those who meet the morning with a firm handshake and a smile and breathe between stages of unwavering effort. Andrews Institute, for those who move. What's even better than going to a UWF football game? Going with all your friends. Decks are available for groups between 25 and 200 people. All group decks come with a UWF football game ticket, food, and soft drinks. It's great for company outings, group functions, birthday parties, and youth groups. Prices start as low as $25 per person. Call 850-474-2746 for more information or to book your deck today. Hey, who are you? Oh, hey, Jeff, I'm a car thief. What? I'm here to steal your car because, well, that's my job. What? 
What? What? What? What? What? What? <laughs> it happens. So get off stage. I'd be better protected from mayhem, like me. Mayhem is everywhere. So get an Allstate agent. In Pensacola, call Melissa Keener. PensacolaPodiatry.com Back here with you from Blue Wahoo Stadium where a stunned home crowd is kind of trying to figure out what's happened here in the first quarter in a minute and a half or so. After watching the home team, the United Argos drive down the field on their first possession, the first possession of the game to the 10-yard line. Looked like they were on fire. A turnover has turned the momentum around, and Mississippi College is up 7-0 in this game. McCarter's kick is going to be short. It's going to be returned by Dimitri Birch, dancing up across the 30, across the 35, and out near the 40. So a good return. Didn't have a chance to touch on that as we kind of jump into this game. That's been something that's developing, Jamie for this Argo program is the kick return game. We've seen Birch, we've seen Ashley, we've seen Clayton punt and kick returns do some damage. Yeah, two electric guys there in Birch, in Birch and Ashley, and uh, Birch does it again. I mean, puts the, puts the Argos in great field position to start this drive. Hopefully, Austin Reed and this offense can take advantage of it. Yeah, and looking at the stats coming into the game, I think it's the first kick return by somebody other than Clayton so far. Birch has returned some punts, but... And that was a good one. So Anthony Johnson in the backfield as UWF looks to answer. Johnson's going to take this one out to the left, get outside, and pick up some good yardage on first down before he's finally wrestled out of bounds. And that time they just give Johnson the inside handoff. It looked like Mississippi College was kind of waiting on that misdirection play again that UWF has been running, but Johnson takes it and beats the uh, defense out to the outside for a gain of 10. Really nice job of bouncing that out outside. So or seven, they'll give, they'll give him seven, so second and three, which is what you like on a second down, very manageable distance. The options are all open. Another handoff to Johnson. He gets into the hole, dances, and then kind of stops. I guess somebody stepped in his way, and he stopped on a dime, and then the helmet came off as well. We'll see how, how many yards they give him there. Do they get the first down? It looks like they are going to move the sticks, so they'll give yep. him the three. Yeah, nice little run again by Johnson, able to find a running lane and get just enough for that first down. That's good. Last time out, of course, a three and out, and really just kind of looked confused on the, on the second possession game. This is only the third possession for this offense. That Mississippi College drive and the UWF drive to start the game ate up a lot of time. It did. Reed. Looking to pass on this one. Plenty of time in the pocket, but the throw is behind the receiver. Latio sat down in the middle of the zone, but he was covered up, so the throw was really kind of the only place that Reed could put it where a defender wasn't. Yeah, and he may have had a streaking Rodney Coates who was running a post route uh, towards the middle of the field there. I don't, I'm not sure if Reed saw him, uh, but lo he looks like he made up his mind there in that Latio throw when he was covered up by both of those defenders. I think we got to keep in mind that Austin Reed is a redshirt freshman Transfer from Southern Illinois. He hasn't seen a ton of college football game action, especially not at this level. As he hits a screen pass to the outside, and what a great job of open field tackling from this Mississippi College defense is jumping in. I think to make make the hit there was 30, John, 33. Jones. Yeah. Yeah, right there, Jonathan Jones in that swing pass there. There's a great job of not over-pursuing Johnson and making a great tackle in space. It really was. Danny. That's where you got to hit a guy like Johnson is down there in that lower body area around the legs to try to bring him down. If you go up high, you're going to miss him, and he's going to yeah. be gone. Yeah, those arm tackles don't work on him. That brings up a third and seven or eight. A big play here, ball out near the 50-yard line. So UWF looking to answer after Mississippi College takes the 7-0 lead here in the second quarter of this one. Reed, time to throw, but finally chased out of the pocket, just chunks it downfield, and that's a throw he'll want to have back. Intercepted and up the sideline. And this one may go to the house, and there it is, and it is Hawthorne. Derek Hawthorne, he had one last week. He gets a pick six this week as well. The Hawthorne brothers killing UWF early. Yeah, probably a ball Reed should have held on to that time. Under duress that time, threw it up just for grabs, and Hawthorne right in the right place at the right time, able to turn it, turn, return it back for a pick six. Yeah, had a man, Austin Reed did, holding onto his jersey in the back as he tried to find an open receiver down the field. Errant throw. These are those. These are the kind of mistakes that kill. And there you saw it there. Nobody able to push Derek Hawthorne out of bounds as he takes that one all the way back. So 13-0 now, and we're pending the PAT from a two-touchdown game in the hole for UWF. Drake McCarter is out. Flags come down before this kick is up. So we may get a false start here. 
That'll move him back a little bit. That really is one of those. That, that ball was floating as well, but, you know, given the fact that he was rolling out and kind of throwing across his body, he had to turn himself a little bit. Yeah, but Mississippi College clearly um, has all the momentum here early in the ball game. We were wondering, you know, how, how would you – how do you cover up this UWF offense? That first drive didn't look like Mississippi College had any answers, but now they are getting some pressure onto Austin Reed. And then when you when you have that third down and seven or eight situation, that's not where this offense wants to be, down and distance wise. They'll back it up and try it from a little further out. That kick is up, and the signal is the kick is good. So McCarter puts it through, 14 nothing now. 11:32 left to play here in the first half of this one. So Jamie. We've been in this situation before. Coach Pete Shinnick and his, and his crew, you know, they've, this is something they haven't seen. They know two touchdowns with this much time left. There's, it's doable. It's a hill. It's not a mountain yet. What do you need to do on this drive? Well, you have to answer, and you have to come away with some type of points, uh, especially as we continue to get into the, the, the second half of this ball game. But this is an important drive, especially for the morale of the team and uh, especially the offense, you want to go down. If, even if it's only a field goal, it's only three points, you have to get something on the board to get this offense going and get some, some type of rhythm here. Are we seeing something different that Mississippi College is doing defensively? That what adjustment they may have made from that first drive, or is this just really a situation of just some mistakes being made on the UWF side? Well, they're bringing pressure, and I don't think Reed has, uh, has adjusted to that just yet. On that first drive, they kind of sat back and got a feel for the ball game, and I think that's why you've seen um, – UWF was able to drive down the field, but they're bringing pressure, and they're doing it from both sides, whether it's the boundary or the field. And um, I think you'll see Reed and Coach and Coach Shinnick in this offense do some things to counteract that, but uh, the Mississippi College is definitely putting the, putting the pressure on now. Clayton and Birch back. Clayton's going to be the man to return this one. Catches it at about his own five, looks to pick up some block and gets a few blocks and has a seam in the middle. If he can break that tackle, it was only the kicker left, but nice job of hanging on for dear life right there it was number uh, 34, Chad Moses, a defensive back, a backup defensive back. Yeah, that, what a that, great return. Yeah, that could have been big. Clayton was averaging 25 yards per kick return. That one's going to be even bigger as he's going to get the ball out. Finally dropped down around the 32 or so. Yeah, all he had to beat was uh, McCarter there, the kicker, if he would have got loose from that, that tackle. That was, was going to be interesting because the kicker was already sliding down trying to find some shoes to grab a hold of. So first down, good. Last time it was Burst with a good kick return. This time Clayton, so good field position to start a drive. And we'll see if – is Austin Reed shaking or is he ready to turn it up? Getting to the outside is Gardner, putting a shoulder down, and that's what you like to see if you're a running back. <laughs> that's a UWF strength coach Brandon Reyes over there. We call him B. He gets more excited than some of the players, but you saw Gardner watch the end of this play. He delivers the blow to the defensive back. And great, great motion there by Gardner. He's able to be relaxed enough to find the open hold and spring it out to the outside. Great run by him. He'll get eight on that play. Yeah, that's when you're wondering as a DB what just happened. What just happened to me right there? Elijah Rogers kind of got run over. So second and two, Gardner again. Hole closed right in front of him. He danced and was able to maybe pick up the first down. We'll see where the It'd spot very is. Close. It's very close. Yep. But that could have been stopped for no gain. Instead, it picks up at least a couple. And we'll see where that is. There's Gardner so far. Five carries for 16 yards. We saw that number up higher in recent weeks, the yards per carry for most of these backs. 3.2 is okay, but not dynamic. Yeah, Anthony Johnson hovering around six yards per carry. But Gardner getting them on um, bulk of these carries to start this drive. They mark him short. Third and one now. Big play here. And Gardner, again, no hole, but he dances in. You'd love to see that second effort as he put a foot in the ground, jumped over the top of some defensive linemen. And where are they going to spot him on this one? He may have gotten just enough for that first down. It looks like they're moving the sticks over there on the side. We'll see. I think that second effort, that, that hurdle over the top was just enough to get him over the sticks. He got a nice job of the Choctaw defense stepping in and hitting him up high, though, and kind of stopping him immediately. Uh, it looks like they're not going to measure. They are moving the sticks forward. First down, Argos on that one. So Great that, second effort yeah, by that's, Gardner. That's, this is big to at least move the chains a couple times. As you mentioned, though, Jamie, you feel like this is a drive that needs to put some points on the board. Reed, quick pass. And that's kind of what I was going to say is I, you feel like as he finds his tight end, Ja'Curry Jackson, that that may be the answer to what we're seeing. Quick 
quick passes. Let's get the ball out of his hands quickly to receivers on short routes and stop trying to throw the ball down deep because the pressure was getting to him, so maybe that can adjust things a little. And that will slow that defense down. Those things like the quick slants, the quick hit hitters on the outside, the screen passes, that slows that rush down a lot. Uh, and that, that also gets Reed going and gets him more comfortable. And folks, that's something we don't see often is the, a pass to the tight end. I think that's maybe the second time this year we've seen that. Another handoff in the middle. This time it's Newton in there. Newton with the carry. Javon Newton, the sophomore, came into the game 47 yards and a TD so far this season is he's going to pick up a couple on first down. We'll give him about four. Yeah, and we'll see Newton on his first action on the night. Able to roll forward, barrel, barrel forward for about three or four on that play. Looks like they'll give him three. It was a 12-yard strike to the big fellow, the tight end Jackson, on the previous play for the first down. So they'll give him a couple yards there. Hard to say. The, the scoreboard says second and eight, but it certainly looks like a second and seven over there where the sticks are across again playing in a baseball stadium it's a little unusual we're up in where you kind of be behind home plate and the field slides away from us Reed this time we'll see what he does as he rolls out he's just going to chuck this thing down as he was outside of the pocket he got hit there's going to be a flag that's yep. a mistake from late the Choctaws hit. on a late hit late hit yeah Reed uh, got bothered the, the, the ball yeah and a great amount of time and I don't know I don't know what the defender for Mississippi College was thinking there that's going to hurt them that's a, that's a big gainer for this Argo offense to move them deeper into Mississippi College territory. Interesting thing is we kind of stop for a second with the penalty call. Trying to figure out if we can get the umpire referee's call, but it doesn't look like it's working for us. But it was, it was roughing the passer. I, I might like to see a little bit more of what we saw in the first two weeks of the season, Jamie, which are some designed runs for Austin Reed. And Coach Shinnick said that is another option that they have in this offense this year. And he said when they feel like they have the numbers in the box that they will do, do some things. Uh, they ha we haven't seen that yet. We saw against Carson Newman, especially the quarterback draws, the design one. So if you're getting this pressure from the outside, it might be an opportunity for Austin just to delay a second and step up and find a running lane and pick up some yards, and that might change the, the dynamic of the pressure Mississippi College sends. So here we go. Ball inside the 30, marked about the 27, and just like that, that's not the play we call, but that is a design run to try to get to the outside for Austin Reed to pick up about two. And that's just another wrinkle that this offense has this year, and um, spot on uh, by Will Kennedy. But uh, able to pick up about two or three yards as he's able to uh, take that run to the outside for about two. I was channeling my inner Tony Romo. There you go. What, what's up with that guy, by the way? Like every play, you'd swear he's actually calling them. Yeah, you would think he from played. Up in the broadcast you would think he played booth. or something. <laughs> Second and eight. Two yards short gain there, but that does give the defense something else to think about here as the Argos are now threatening the red zone here, needing to answer down 14 0 with 7.38 left to play here in the second quarter. Good tough running by Mason. Sorry, Newton puts his head. Is that Gardner? I get them all Jayden, confused. Uh, Gardner's yeah. back yeah, in. 21. Gardner. Another great run by him. That offense uh, throwing a little bit of a different, different wrinkle here for that, that defense for the Mississippi College. And Mississippi College is starting to have to think about a few more yeah. things here. Um, you see that rush kind of lighten up now as uh, offense is clicking here and is in, in the red zone. Looks more like that first drive. I just pulled on my mom where she would run through. I'm, I'm the oldest of five siblings. She'd run through everybody's name. I'm going to do that with the running backs. I figure I'll get the right one eventually at some point during the yeah, play. Yeah, my go. mom does the same thing. Here we go, third and three. Quick out. Did that ball hit the turf? They're going to call it incomplete. Coates is arguing that he caught it. The, the coverage was there. That, that really was a tight window to try to throw it in. Let's see what happened yeah, here. Yeah, tight window there. Reed was oh. trying to fit that through. And that one bounced in. There's Looks no like doubt it about it. may have just bounced off the turf, yeah. I don't feel like we're seeing Austin Reed really throw the ball with a whole lot of confidence, at least. The first drive, yes, but since then, a lot of these throws, as I mentioned, seem to have a, a dip to the ball. Like, they're, they're going into the dirt, so to speak. Like, he doesn't have control of it. That'll bring on Alex Virgilio. He made his only attempt for field goal last week from 37 yards. This one looks like it's going to be about 30, about the same distance from about 37. And he misses, pulls it to the left. So the kicking woes continue for this UWF team. Down 14-0 here in Blue Wahoo Stadium. You are watching and listening to the UWF Sports Network.
What does Argo Spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pre-game grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. Guarantee. Bringing you back in here to the stadium, Blue Wahoo Stadium in Pensacola, Florida, football by the bay on a Saturday night. Will Kennedy and Jamie Smith with you on the UWF Sports Network, Cox Sports TV, your TV Florida, and ESPN Pensacola. So Mississippi College from their own 20 after a missed 37-yarder. Dietrich Cawthorn fakes the pitch, keeps it, and finally gets stretched out and just kind of goes to ground in front of that UWF defense. Nice job of stretching that play out. Yeah, great pursuit by that defense. Hawthorne didn't have a pitch guy there. Trent Archie took that away from him, and then you see uh, 14 for UWF come over there, and I believe that's going to be uh, T.J. Williams, a defensive back. Does a great job. T.J. had that pick six last week, took it back to the house against Lynchburg. That'll bring up a second and long. This is what you want to do to that offense, the, the Mississippi College offense. We did that on the first possession for them, forced them into some second nines, makes it a little more difficult for them. Really kind of a disastrous start other than the first drive for this Argo football team. Nothing has gone their way. A pick six from Austin Reed for this Mississippi College defense. Is this, this play, again, a good collapse in the middle of that Mississippi College line by this UWF defense as they get some, some big bodies in there. I think uh, jumping in, we haven't seen much of Ty Cox, but he's involved in this one here, number 98. As they close it up early, he kind of chopped him. And then Gail Laurent and some others getting in on the tackle. Yeah, you start seeing those big, the big beef up in there now. The big guys getting in on the action, able to fill those running lanes and do a great job of holding that to a, only about a, a gain. They'll give him one on that carry. We saw a drive where Mississippi College, last time they had the football, everything clicked for them. They go down and get a touchdown. And then an errant pass from Austin Reed leads to a pick six for Derek Hawthorne, brother of quarterback Dietrich Hawthorne. And all of a sudden you're down 14 nothing. Then you finally get a good drive. You miss a 37-yarder, which is – Certainly makeable. Let's see if this tackle can happen. It does. Beautiful job of Chandler Ferguson and others standing it up in there and, and making that play go nowhere. Great job. They try to fake it out with the inside handoff. Pitch it to the guy, uh, their, their running back. Trent Archie, yeah. Jamori Monk got nothing there. Limehouse jumping in on that play as well. Yeah, great job by the defense. Great pursuit, great eye discipline. And they'll get, they'll get Mississippi College off of the field. T.J. Limehouse will officially get credit for that one. So that's going to force a punt. This is what you had to have after that missed field goal. you got about four and a half minutes left in this half. Really, the pressure is on to get some points before you go to the locker room. Could change the whole dynamic as far as the, the energy and the momentum in this football game. A Carter back to punt this one. And there's some, some whistles are blown before as the play clock was winding down. So Mississippi College will take a quick timeout so they don't give up another five yards and have to punt this thing from – Closer to their own goal line. This will be a media timeout. 14-0, 425 left to play here in the first half of this one. The Argos trail the Choctaws here on the UWF Sports Network. Make your goal. What does Argo Spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pre-game grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. who measure success by the worn tread on their tires and those who strengthen their body and mind and drift through their weekends over nature's curve. Andrew 
News Institute for those who move. We're back with you here at the stadium here. 425 left, first quarter, 14-0 game. Mississippi College leads the University of West Florida here in Gulf South Conference play. But the Argos hold and force a punt. Great kick by McCarter from Mississippi College. Forces Birch back. Couple spin moves. First of all, great catch having to go over his shoulder and then to get something out of that out near the 35 before they finally bring him down. Not a bad punt return at all. Yeah, great job by Birch there. I mean, does what he can. Uh, hits the, hits the, the circle button on the PS4 there right here, making two defenders miss from Mississippi College and gives, I think, That'll be about a 12, 10 yard, 10 yard gain on that punt return. So it, it, he puts UWF in a in a great spot to start this drive. Heck of a kick though. That thing had you know the, the tight spiral you want to see, good hang time, and really forced Birch back. And he had to make a tough grab over his own shoulder. That ball may have ended up inside the 20 with a Mississippi College bounce. So the, their own 35 with about four minutes to play. Austin Reed and the offense back on after driving down, getting a reasonable 37 yard field goal attempt that Alex Virgilio just could not convert. Anthony Johnson. That's the tough running right there. Puts the shoulder down at the end and makes a Mississippi College defender pay. Yeah, it makes a, and he takes a good lick in the, at the end there by Miller. But Johnson does a great job of picking up what he can uh, on that run. You know, despite the lack of real size across the front of the defensive line for Mississippi College, the rest of this defense is a good size and, and lots of speed, and they get to the football well. These linebackers and safeties who really lead this team in tackles. So here we go, second down and long, eight or nine, and there's a good throw. That's the, probably the best throw other than the one by Grant we've seen. And actually, as he, he's going to convert, that's going to be a first down. Nice throw and catch over there. Is that Mitchell? Evan Mitchell on in the game now. Stepped into that one, had plenty of time, and he, still a little wobbly, but had the man open. He find these pockets of space and get a chance to make a catch. But even the two that we saw Q make a great catch, we saw Grant make a great catch. Q's ball was well thrown. Grant, he had to go up and make the one-handed grab, but it's really been a little bit of a struggle control-wise, kind of like a baseball pitcher when he just doesn't have his best stuff on any given night. you got to grind. you got to find a way to do it. Here we go, first down. Austin Reed out near the 50. This one thrown behind the receiver. Can't hook up with Mitchell this time. And the, the defensive backs from Mississippi College are doing a great job of really sticking close to these receivers on all their routes. And uh, most of it's zone coverage, so they have a chance to have their eyes on the football while watching the, the route develop. And uh, Mississippi College playing tough defense so far. Mississippi College has a couple brother combinations. We mentioned the Hawthorns running at uh, quarterback and defensive back. They've got Cole Rotenberry, a wide receiver, number one on offense. And that's number nine, Turner Rotenberry on the coverage there, his, his brother as well. So Reed back to pass. The pressure's coming, but he hangs in there and finds Rodney Coates. That was a good, strong throw and another first down for UWF. And that's a great strike there by Reed. That's the Reed we are accustomed to seeing. And uh, a great catch at the end by Coates, but an even job. Reed's just settled back in the pocket, calm and collected, and delivers a first down strike to Coates there. You like the fact that these receivers are really looking and finding a way to find some holes in this Mississippi College defense and then sitting down and, and being a target for Austin Reed. Three out to his right here. Single back in the backfield, one receiver short side in front of the UWF bench. Here's the snap, first down. Reed, kind of a pump fake, almost looked like he lost the ball. Has a man, what a catch, and we'll see. Do they give him a yes, they do. Touchdown, UWF, Kenneth Chanel. We hadn't called his name all night long. I think he just, that's probably the first play I can remember seeing him, and it's going to be a touchdown strike. Yeah, great throw there by Reed, and he finds one of his favorite targets, Chanel, who we've seen in week one go off. But uh, Mississippi College brings pressure, and that puts their defensive backs in a man situation, and Chanel, with all that speed, burns his defender for the touchdown. What a I, Austin Reed, I see in the replay here on television, it looks like he did kind of pump fake. Don't know if he meant to pump fake, but it worked, and it's going to put the Argos on the board pending this point after. Alex Virgilio is on after missing his field goal attempt from 37. We'll see how he does with the point after. This one looks up, and it looks strong. It's in the bay. It looked like it cleared the net, and just like that, the Argos back in this thing in a big way, 14-7. Let's take another look. Watch Reed here. Yep, kind of a pump fake. I thought he was about to lose the football, but look at this catch by Kenneth Chanel going full extension with the fingertips. We don't have that replay. We're not going to the booth on that one. I don't know, but we're going to give him a touchdown either way. What a heck of a play. 
as that goes for 32 yards in the first points of the game for UWF. So a couple of big plays right there. We saw one to Mitchell, a 17-yarder to Rodney Coates, and then that 32-yarder to Kenneth Chanel. Just like that, with two minutes and 13 seconds left, it puts the Argos right back in the thick of this one. And Quentin telling them to give the camera some love there. <laughs> but that was a big drive for the offense. That was important, especially as you get deeper into this second quarter. That was big. That puts some momentum back on your side. And uh, depending on how the defense goes about their things here, with, with, with two timeouts left, uh, you may be able to be, be able get, to get ball something back, else. Yeah. You, you, get a, the board you get a three and out, and that play, that, there's a drive for you. Five plays, 66 yards, and a minute and 56. So that offense we got used to seeing over the, the previous two weeks, especially the second half against Shorter and then Lynchburg last week, maybe they're finding their feet because the first drive looked a lot like that and then a little bit of struggle. And we've said this coming in, Jamie, that, you know, Shorter and Lynchburg looked great, a lot of points on the board, but the opponent – you know, what's it going to be like when you're playing somebody who's got a little more size and a little more speed? We're kind of finding that out here tonight. This kick is short, and there's going to be a return, but a great job by this UWF special teams of flying down to the football and forcing this thing out of bounds or near the near the boundary, inside the 20. Yeah, they were really flying that time. We do have a flag on the play. Let's see what the call may be here. You're impressed with the athleticism of some of these Choctaw players for sure. So this is a test. This is definitely a test for this UWF defense. I'm not sure if this was a you know late hit of bounds or unnecessary hard roughness. To, hard to say. I don't see anything. I don't see anything from that that looks penalty penalty worthy. There's there's a huddle over here, and I think they're kind of maybe discussing. And they may pick this up. That was Jamori Mark on the return, the running back. While we're waiting to see what the call is, after, it's an after the play unsportsmanlike. Going against West Florida. I, I couldn't see what it was right there, but that, that hurts. You do a great job of stopping that thing inside the 20. Instead, that thing's going to bounce outside and be out near the 35. Hey, Whataburger fans, if you love mushrooms, then you're going to love hearing this. The Mushroom Swiss Burger is now an all-time favorite. Made hot and fresh with two all-beef patties, two slices of Swiss, two layers of premium grilled mushrooms, and a creamy au jus sauce available whenever the craving strikes. You're listening to UWF Football on ESPN Pensacola, 1330 AM, 99.1 FM, WEBY Milton, Pensacola, along with our simulcast here on Cox Sports TV and Your View, Florida. First down for the Choctaws, and they're going to get something going here with this first carry. Another nice little dance inside, and we're seeing these different backs. That's Jalen Jones, first time I think we've called his name. He has 82 yards and four touchdowns coming into the game. So you'll see the nobody has a, a huge amount of yards, but these guys all have near 100 yards, a lot of these running backs. Yeah, and they do it by committee. And, I mean, we just see another one of the um, running backs there, right, able to pick up about six or seven on that play. But, uh, I mean, they just do it. They do it through committee. Second and four now, so good positive gain on first down. This is the down and distance kind of situation. Oh, boy, big hit on the backside of that. But the play is going to roll out here near the UWF sideline and get close to that first down yardage. But the quarterback, Hawthorne, caught my eye behind the play. He turned and made a block after – or actually got kind of blindsided. Nice job of stretching that thing out on the sideline, but it's going to go for enough to pick up the first down. Yeah, that time Mississippi College has the numbers on the outside, and uh, they basically outman UWF on the corner there, able to pick up the first down. That was Quentin Young with the carry. Redshirt freshman out of the Birmingham area, Clay Chalkville High School in Alabama, traditional power in Alabama high school football. So here we go, first and ten. Choctaw's looking to answer the UWF touchdown now as they are back to their shenanigans on offense and picking up four, five, six on the first down with that carry. Yeah, another decent running play there for Mississippi College. Able to run it up the middle there. I couldn't tell who the back was on that carry. Hard to see with all the green bodies and jerseys flying around to make the play. We'll see what the official is on that, but you've got a man down on the field. That looks like, is that Terry Limehouse Jr., number 31? Not quite sure as his, some of his teammates will take a knee right there. That was Jalen Jones again, it looks like, for six yards, number 10. Yeah, not 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 able to see what happened there and by Limehouse. Hopefully it's just a cramp. And Limehouse is, looks, looks, he's frustrated for sure. Maybe some of that is the frustration of what's going on for this defense, but you can kind of see the look on his face right there. 
There's really a key moment here. 50 seconds left. It looks like at this point you're not getting the ball back, but you certainly want to stop Mississippi College, Jamie, from, from putting anything else on the board. You want to, you want to hold this at 14-7 going to the locker room. Oh, definitely. Um, if anything, you want to put something else on the board. But with 50 seconds, uh, I mean. Let's take another look at this one right here at the end of this it looks play. Like we'll see it here. Hard to see. Oh, he got rolled up oh, right there on the back of the knee or the yeah, ankle. left leg injury. And always really a dangerous thing when you're near that tackle and you're still standing up and it's rolling towards you. I mean, we've all had that happen kind of at the end of a play. I always say we'll hope that he's okay, that it's something they can work on on the sideline and not an ACL or MCL or something of that nature. But I always wonder how offensive linemen do it because they get rolled up all the time from behind on the side. That's why they wear those big braces on their knees. Yeah, and that's another blow to this defense with Duncan being out. I mean, you have another player in Limehouse who is very active on that mm -hmm. defense. Uh, they'll have to, you know, just go to the next guy up uh, type of mentality and, and see what you can muster up as we, uh, as we continue to tick under uh, this, this second, second quarter here. Limehouse, one of those long, rangy safeties who comes up and makes, makes plays both in the running game and the passing game. So it's going to be another hole in this defense. The depth is being tested tonight for Coach Pete Shinnick and Coach Darian Doolin. So the, before we can start again, here come the refs out again to I don't know what they're trying to figure out. The play clock should be rolling. It was a running play, so. May have started just yeah, early. They're, tur they're tur turning the game clock back, but really, as soon as that ball is set, it should be rolling again, unless Mississippi College took a timeout there. Really kind of, this is, this is that range where you're out near, right at the 50-yard line. Mississippi College, I don't you know, their kicking game looks like he's got a strong leg, McCarter, so if you can get yourself down near the 30 or so, you've got a chance for a field goal here to end the half, so about 20 yards away from field goal range. And Mississippi College is more, more than likely, you know, setting up for the field goal, if anything. Uh, not Their offense is not necessarily set up for the pass, so with UWF, you kind of have an idea of what they're trying yeah. to do here. Now, we haven't situation. seen Hawthorne throw one down the field deep yet, and that's always a, one of the dangerous things about him, but those usually do tend to come off broken plays because right now he's only got one receiver, Rotenberry, out to the right. They're in that, and of course, as soon as I say that, he drops back and chunks one deep down the field, and there is a receiver, and he was open. It was just thrown to the wrong side, and that's what we're talking about when we talk about Dietrich Hawthorne. Not that accurate, but he does have the arm strength to throw that ball into that area. Yeah, and pretty decent coverage that time by number 18 for UWF. I believe that's going to be Henry Montgomery on the yeah. coverage, uh, who was left out in man. Did a decent, do decent job of covering him on that play. Hawthorne just not accurate on that pass. And that was Morgan Sharp, number six, the wide receiver who slipped out, who's really built like a running back. He's 6'1", 200, and you look at him and you think he's either a linebacker or an RB, but he's kind of – receiver doesn't really mean the same thing for Mississippi College as it does – for UWF. 43 seconds left now. Second or third down and about four or five. Good job by the defense as they jump in and force the fourth down. So definitely not going to give up any more points here at this point. Is that a timeout from Coach Shinnick and company? Yeah, they're going to have a timeout here for yeah, UWF. You, might, you give yourself a, a chance to get the football back and have an opportunity to throw one deep. And of course, as we saw last week, they blocked a punt. We're turning that thing for a touchdown on special teams. So possibilities are endless so to speak yeah great job by the defense that was a very important drive to do a great job of getting mississippi college off the field there uh very important that's going to factor late in this ball game i believe that's going to be one of the more important plays as we look as we look back on this ball game jamie i know you that you're frustrated if you're a uwf player you don't feel like you've played anywhere near what your capability is in this football game do you go in though and say hey we're just down 14 7 you know if you take away that pick six, this is a pretty even football game. It is. And, I mean, you with the Austin Reed interception, I mean, that's very uncharacteristic of him, uh, just like the interception he threw early in the ball game last week. But I think you go in the second half of this ball game and come out and uh, knowing you do have momentum on your side right now with that defensive stop and you were scoring the last scoring party. But um, you sort of feel shackled if you're a UWF player, knowing you can play better than this. And uh, I think they're just ready to unleash that. And if they can get this offense rolling, and defense is look, looking like they made up a couple of adjustments here, uh, they, I think they'll be fine. Karan Ashley, the single man, back to return the punt. He's going to stand out at his own 10 yard. He was back by the goal line, and the coaches told him, man, you go up to the 10. If that ball's over your head, you let it go. That's kind of standard for football. I, I imagine Pete Shinnick, as we wait the snap, and a little bit of a rugby-style kick is he's going to roll out and kind of pooch this thing down the sideline, probably trying to kill some clock. Nice job on the kick as it's going to scoot out inside the 20. 
at the 15. Good job. I've been impressed with this special teams game, especially with the kicking of Drake McCarter. It's good to have a senior kicker punter. What I was going to say was that, you know, Coach Schenck told us that he went in against Shorter at halftime in a 14-14 game, similar in some ways, and said, I don't think that's the best you guys can play. If that is your best, we're in trouble. But, you know, I know you're better than this. I imagine it's going to be a very similar discussion at half. Yeah, I think he said something along the lines of, if this is who we are, then, uh, yeah, then, we'll, get, then, then we need to be somebody yeah, else. exactly. <laughs> Here we go. First down from your own 15. 30 seconds left. Quick handoff in the middle. Going to pick up a couple yards. It looks like you're just going to scoot out and try to get to halftime. Javon Newton with the carry. They'll take another timeout. I don't know if that means, like, maybe we'll chunk one deep down the field as they'll, or, or maybe Pete Schenck just, I'm going to use all my timeouts. What's the point of carrying them to the half, right? I, might as well. Might as well use them up. Uh, but you never know what Coach Schenck has planned. They do have a couple wrinkles in that offense this year uh, with a couple trick plays. I'm not so sure they'll try them this early in the ball game, uh, but you never know. You never know. Uh, I mean, I know we've watched practices and seen a couple things here and there, uh, but um, you never know what's going on in the head down there, the head coach. We're going to try to get Coach Shinnick. Quick word from him as we go to the half. I'm crossing fingers and toes and, and talking to the technical people above. The technical <laughs> gods. That, that it'll work. But uh, now we just be interested to hear kind of what his take is on the half because I really feel like, even with the interception, it's just so rare that the guy scoots all the way up the sideline like that. Even if somebody bumps him out, it's maybe a, it's still maybe a 7-7 game. Plus, you've missed a field goal. Could easily be 14-10 even with that. Another handoff. Another carry for Newton. He's going to do a nice job cutting it up the field. The clock will stop Can't, with the change of first yeah, down. Yeah, it'll stop for first down. If you can get up and clock this thing, I think maybe not enough arm on Austin Reed to get it all the way to the end zone from the 35-ish, but you certainly could throw one deep. Got to clock it. Clock is rolling. They're going to run a play, actually. And if you don't get a first down, that's the end of the half, and he did not. So looks like they'll just go into the half that'll, here. That'll take us to near the break, and clock is gone to triple zero. So really uh, an interesting first half of football, to say the least, in a 14-7 game as we go to the break here in Pensacola, Blue Wahoo Stadium, in what really is kind of not, not a shock because we knew Mississippi College was going to be good. We knew that Mississippi College was going to come in and be a threat here, but I'm, I'm impressed with what the Choctaws are able to do on both sides of the football. And really some, some issues for UWF. Brian Henry is catching up with Coach Pete Shinnick, and let's, let's get a listen down on the sideline. We we're trying to have one touchdown. Obviously, the pick six uh, comes against us. Uh, obviously, like what we've done last couple drives offensively, just got to keep working at it. Okay, good luck in the second half. All right, you heard Coach Schenck there. We, we, we missed a little bit of that there, but we'll take a break here. We'll come back, and we'll talk with Quentin Randolph. That's coming up next here, 14-7 UWF Trails here on the UWF Sports Network. What does Argo Spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pre-game grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. who measure success by the worn tread on their tires and those who strengthen their body and mind and drift through their weekends over nature's curve. Andrews Institute for 
those who move.com. We're here spending a little time with senior wide receiver from the UWF football team, Quentin Randolph from Navarre, local guy. Yes, now sir. you've been here since since the beginning. So what is this experience like for you, this this senior year, this last ride, if you will? It's amazing, man. Like I said, uh, they can't see it right now, but this beautiful Penn Air field right behind us, this beautiful Daryl Gooden building. Um, just to come here at the beginning and this whole spot just be trees um, to being in the women's away volleyball locker room with 100 plus guys and just like 20 hooks. Um, it's just awesome. Uh, I feel like y'all watch my son grow or something. That's what, it, that's what I equate it to. You're part of creating something that mm -hmm. this, you know, years down the road, people may look back and say, you know, those guys, those guys that helped build this. Honestly, I can't wait for that moment uh, to be able to come back. Hopefully, you know what I'm saying, this will be a stadium by then and see how far UWF has come. And I just want that moment where I get to walk out there and put my hands up and be real old and just the inaugural team. That's what my dad preached to me when I first signed. He was like, you'll be a part of that inaugural team. And me being young, I was like, ah, whatever. But that's, that's a pretty big deal. People that see you on the field and more of us, people that see you in the game, and though we, we've exposed a little bit of you at practice mm -hmm. and in the locker room and things like that. Mm -hmm. You've got boundless energy and that smile all the time and everything, but you fought through some adversity too. Yes. Um, so my first two, two to three years, um, a little bit including the national championship year, um, I wasn't where I wanted to be. Of course, everybody wants to come and play, but I had to go through scout team. I had um, some academic troubles. Um, so I went through a little bit of turmoil um, to get where I am, um, but that just makes the story as beautiful as it is. So that's why when you see me, I'm always energetic, always excited because I know where I was and I know how hard it was to get to where I am. So now I'm just excited and happy to be able to play. That leadership role for you, you take it very seriously. I take it extremely seriously um, because as a leader and as a senior, the team's only gonna go as far as you go. So I have to, let myself know that when I'm coming into practice and things like that. If my energy's down, everybody else's energy down. If my energy's up, everybody else's energy's up. So I'm trying to lead this team to victory. Um, as a senior, they're looking for me to be a leader, so that's what I want to do. What does Argo Spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pre-game grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. Bringing you back in here to Blue Wahoo Stadium. Will Kennedy joined now by Gary Lucius, the game ops manager for the University of West Florida. Nobody works harder. In, and there's a lot of people working really hard in this building. Nobody's working harder than this guy. You got a great staff, by the way, too. Yeah. We actually uh, got a great staff this year. Uh, one thing that we're noticing, our students, compared to years past, they're excited. They want to get experience in college athletics. So we're, we're getting more bodies, but we're also getting a higher quality of students at UWF that want to help us out. And they're doing a great job. We're getting some great interns, too, from other schools. There are a lot of great stadiums across Division II football. This one is really, truly unique in the fact that it is a minor league baseball stadium. For those of you out there who don't know, the Pensacola Blue Wahoos AA affiliate of the Minnesota Twins play right here. 
and there is this, this frantic thing that goes on <laughs> in the fall. Uh, sometimes we're, we're watching to see are the Wahoos going to make the playoffs and what is that going to mean because you guys have to convert yeah. this thing from a baseball field into a football field. I think we have some video of that that, we're, that we'll show as Garen's talking here. This is kind of what the process looks like yeah. in a super fast motion. Yeah, so this all started first uh, about two weeks before our first game. Uh, Tony Wynn does a great job of getting a hold of um, River Regents who takes care of the grass and fills it all in. And then also the outfield bleachers, which you'll see start going up in a second as well. But it's a long process, and it's a, you don't realize until you start watching the video how long it takes and, <laughs> and everyone doing their part. But it's a, it's a big process, but everyone has their own part, and it all comes together. And that's what was a cool thing for our interns to see. It started first with us just hanging banners in the, in the concourse, and then all of a sudden they got to see the whole thing develop for the first game. So they were just really impressed with everything that went on. So you can see the bleachers starting to get installed grass fully in literally a cast of, of thousands so to speak that, that yeah. makes this happen and yeah in, in a cool setting you can kind of see the water behind the stadium here we saw we've already seen a football kicked into the bay and all that but really the transformation is amazing because this really is a it's an interesting yeah. and fantastic place to watch football when all is said and done yeah this is a great venue you the first time i came to a game it really felt like a bowl game at the end of the season just the atmosphere uh, the view especially, and then the excitement when you see the visiting team come in for the first time. They haven't played in a place like this, so they have their phones out. They're taking pictures and all that great stuff. And if you come to a practice on a Tuesday or Thursday, you could see the Blue Angels practicing right over the water there, which is really cool. Any truth to the rumor that Tony Wynn was actually painting the ends on there? Yeah, yeah. Like you said, it takes a thousand <laughs> people to come put this thing together. And, you know, last Saturday he's down there putting the paint <laughs> down in the end zone. Uh, you know, the bleacher guys were still finishing up a few things, and our students were hanging banners still that we were getting in and sponsorship stuff. So that, that was uh, many hands that go into it. That was last Saturday. I think we can come back to the booth, booth here. Yeah, that was last Saturday, you know, and, and against Virginia Lynchburg. And, yeah. and you do it again this week, and then next week is homecoming as well. Yeah. And, and we're just looking at the inside of the stadium. You guys have got a ton of stuff going on outside. There's a, a student tailgate section behind where the amphitheater is. Yeah. There's a, alumni area, different businesses and colleges yeah. come. I think there was a shrimp boil today with our yeah. Fort Walton Beach, our Emerald Coast campus as yeah. well. Yeah. That's a lot. There's other stuff that has to be managed. And yeah. then you have other departments and divisions at the university that are involved yeah. in the process. Yeah, so as you know, we meet every Tuesday at uh, 10 a.m. for about an hour. And in those meetings, about 30 people from across campus, anywhere from uh, communications across campus like yourself to the police, to alumni, to our own sponsorships. And it just allows us to get all in the same room get on the same page as, okay, who's setting up? Okay, we got Publix, Coca-Cola, all that stuff. And really, it's a chance to, to see what they need and then moving forward, what things can we fix to make better the next time? And uh, we do quick summaries as well. So, like I said, it's football. home football is not just an athletic event. It's everyone from across campus doing their part to make the atmosphere great outside the stadium before they ever come in. And it's it's not just football. This is where it gets even deeper for you. Is it, Last weekend, we had a ton of stuff going on on campus. You had swimming yesterday yeah. Yeah. in the natatorium. Volleyball won last night. By the way, swimming yeah. won all their matches yeah. and yeah. their meets. Volleyball won last night in conference play. Yeah. Mississippi College, they beat West Al, I think, today, this afternoon. Yeah. I see some of the girls here at the game. Yeah. You've got staff running that, too. Yeah. yeah, so that's what's great is uh, we have, like I said, we have some great interns and other administrators that pitch in on those weekends that can help be there. But our interns, I mean, they know how to run it from start to finish, and that's a big help when we have a football game down here where you can't be in two places at once. It's a great experience. That's the best way for them to learn, and they put on a great job. I didn't get any text, so that's always a good thing. <laughs> yeah, when there's no problems. Yeah. Before you get out of here, Garrett's from up north. Have yeah. you gotten used to this humidity yet, this, this uh, heat? As you can see, no, not really. It's uh, You're running around. You can, When you get here in the morning, it's nice and cool. And then by noon, you're like, oh, man, you can definitely feel it start cooking as the day goes on. Shout so, out to the family. Yeah, my mom and dad watch every game, so love you guys. See you next month. All right, appreciate you coming yeah. up here. Get Thanks back to work me. down yeah. there. 14-7 here at the half. When we come back, we'll break down the statistics from the first half. Get ready for the second. You're watching Argo football right here on the UWF Sports Network. Garen, be safe going down yeah, the stairs. Thanks. I kind of we'll like it We'll be back up here. with you in just a few minutes. You got me falling hard, sweet baby. You got me falling hard for you. It's still, I felt this way before. You know it's true. It's still, you got me more and more. Oh, you got me falling hard. This is not a restaurant. This is slow smoking that stirs your soul. 
the stuff that makes going out feel like coming home. This is not a restaurant. It's a barbecue, 50 years in the making. Come fill up on all your favorites. Sonny's Barbecue. Come taste tradition. Here at CPC, you're not just a customer, you're part of the family. We operate seven offices throughout the Florida Gulf Coast and Alabama regions with nearly 100 employees to best serve you, the customer. So thank you to all of the thousands of businesses who have helped to make us a leader in the office technology industry for more than 45 years. We will continue to provide a level of service that can't be copied and look forward to the bright future that lies ahead for our communities, cities, and country. Sir, but the coffee machine is right behind you. Bring you back here to the booth at Blue Wahoo Stadium here in Pensacola, Florida. Will Kennedy and Jamie Smith. Halftime, 14-7. Little bit of a surprise. Really isn't too big a surprise. We knew Mississippi College would come into this game with the University of West Florida and give them everything they wanted as far as a fight was concerned in this sum. Really is a test, Jamie. Of, of where this team is. We said that right off the bat. We're going to find out a lot about them tonight, and we're in that process right now, down a touchdown and a half. Yeah, and still relatively early in the year. Um, I know we mentioned we're getting into the mid-portion of the year, but this team is fairly young still, and, um, I mean, this is another one of those moments. It's another test, and um, how are they going to come out, and, um, you know, are they going to pass or fail? And I think it really depends on this UWF team. Defense is playing great right now. Um, they've made a couple of adjustments here and there, and they seem to slow that offense down for Mississippi College. But that offense has to get going, and uh, Austin Reed has to play just a little bit better. Difference in this ball game is an Austin Reed interception that was returned for a touchdown. Let's take a look at some of the highlights here from the first half. It's really been a lot of this, the rushing attack of Mississippi College, 94 yards for the Choctaws in the first half. This was the big one that got the scoring going. Touchdown run for Jordan Wright. Came in as their leading rusher and, and really broke. That was a, four, a fourth and one. He bounces it to the outside and takes it to the house. And really, UWF sells out to try to stop the run. And instead, it ends up as a touchdown. Yep. And then you hear here uh, the Austin Reed interception. Yeah, this was, this was just as he had a defender with his jersey, never got his body turned, never got his feet set, and just floated yeah. that over Kenneth Chanel's head. And it's Derek Hawthorne, the brother of quarterback, Deidre Hawthorne, took this one all the way back to the house. And, and, you know, really from having a dynamic first drive of the game, all of a sudden you're looking at being down 14 nothing. And that's one of those balls right after you throw it, you probably realize in your brain, hey, I maybe shouldn't have thrown that ball. And uh, unfortunately, that's an immediate result that he sees. Uh, but Austin probably knows better than that. That was a 65-yard pick six. And this was Alex Virgilio just missing, pulling that thing to the left on a 37-yard field goal attempt. And the officials would come out and say no good on that one. And, and that could have made it 14-3. And after a fumble, we didn't see the fumble on the first drive. They called a fumble on probably what was an incomplete pass to Anthony Johnson. So you could have been 14-6, 14-10 at that point. Instead, you're still down 14 nothing. But finally, pump fake yeah, pump and, fake a, and a jump throw. All the things you tell a quarterback probably not to do, and it all works out because the throw goes down the field. Yep. And this time he finds Chanel. Austin not Reed, set. <laughs> yeah, and it ended up being Everything. a 32-yard, I think, touchdown catch and throw, and wow, I mean, yeah, to one of his favorite targets, it. yeah, Kenneth Chanel able to come up with that big catch and put the Argos back in this ball game. They're going to need more playmakers like him. I know Quentin Randolph would be excited to make some plays, and Rodney Coates had a couple great catches going into the latter portion of the first half. So we'll see if we can get uh, more of those playmakers. Taylor Tate Latio has been quiet as also um, early in this ball game. We wondered early on. We made a couple comments during the first half of we were seeing some balls that, you know, off of the hands of Austin Reed that looked like they were. Not quite in control. Like maybe he's struggling with the football a little bit a little tonight. Wobbly. The nose of it is going down. They're a little, a little wobbly. bit wobbly. It's not what we've seen in previous weeks from Austin Reed. We got some uh, halftime stats to take a look at from this first half of action. And you kind of see passing. We, we, we expected this maybe from Mississippi College. 14 yards is maybe a little lower than I would have thought. But, you know, rushing for 100 yards in the first half. And then the passing for UW, pretty, pretty good balanced attack as far as the rushing and passing numbers are concerned for the Argos. A lot of the passing numbers, though, came on that first drive. We saw a big throw to Quentin Randolph. We saw Kevin Grant with a one-handed catch. So 
Where's the balance in the second half? What do you expect to see offensively from this UWF team? Well, I think you can see a couple of more short throws here for Austin Reed. And we were talking about that earlier in the booth with those short throws. He looks comfortable and he looks like he can, uh, you know, lure that defense who was rushing him and had a couple blitz packages for him early in the ball game. Uh, I think you'll see a couple more short throws. Uh, this offense was running the ball efficiently in the first half. So if we can get Anthony Johnson going and Jaden Gardner and, you know, you throw Shamari Mason in there, you know what kind of back he can do. Uh, I think you'll see this offense get into a rhythm and, um, you know, be that offense that puts up 400 so yards per game. Five different guys have run the football for Mississippi College. Wright leads the way with 38 yards and, of course, has that touchdown as well. It's kind of breaking in the individual statistics. Again, we've got eight guys that have caught passes for the Argos, so spreading the football around and, and pretty good distribution in the numbers. If you look at Austin Reed, he's got a 129 QBR, 10 of 18, you know, 142 yards and the touchdown, but it's the pick six really that's, that's hurt them. We've seen the defense struggle on a drive but look better as the half closed out. So there was, there was a lot to play out here the rest of the way. Do you expect the defense to come with a little bit different? Thankfully, I think you'll see them be more, you know, still disciplined with the eyes, but you'll just see this defense dial up a couple things going forward. All right, we'll take a break. We'll get back and we'll be ready for the second half here on the UWF Sports Network. Success isn't measured by fame or fortune. It's measured by time and the amount of times you influence others to be better, to transform something small into something spectacular. Success is measured by the impact you make. What impact will you make? The University of West Florida. No limits. What does Argo Spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pre-game grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. Bringing you back in here to Blue Wahoo Stadium in Pensacola, Florida. A couple minutes, well, not a minute, actually 20 seconds away from starting the second half of this one. 14-7 is the score. Mississippi College on top of the home team, the University of West Florida Argonauts. There's Austin Reed, the quarterback, stretching things out. As we mentioned, kind of an up and down first half for him. 10 of 18, 142 yards, touchdown, but that interception that was taken back the other way for a pick six. Yeah, and that really hurt him. Um, I think that's one of the, uh, and the most important stats. If you go back to the first half of this game, uh, those two turnovers by, uh, by UWF is going to be the thing that hurt them in, most in that first half. But if you can see Austin Reed come out and, you know, take care of the ball like he's been doing for majority of the season, I think that offense will be in, in great shape. We'll have to see if the play calling changes at all. You're only down seven points, of course. The Argos will be kicking the ball away to the Choctaw, so the defense maybe needs to come out and, and set the tone for the second half here. You're only down a touchdown. This is kind of a similar situation to the Carson Newman game in week one. Didn't play exceptionally well, but you're still within striking distance without any question, only down seven with a whole half to play. Yeah, no need to panic just yet. Only down by seven. Plenty of ball game left, 30 minutes left in this ball game. Uh, just go out and play your game uh, if, you're, if you're the Argos. So here we go, just about ready to get this thing kicked off and, and set up. Is it Norris? Yeah, Colton Norris will be out to kick this thing off. Highlighter shoes. Highlighter <laughs> shoes, yeah. Makes me think of homework, and that's not a good thing. <laughs> and we'll see if he can put this ball. The, the breeze not really been a factor in this one. The flags not quite like they were last week against Lynchburg, but as we've seen a couple times with Norris, he'll pull this thing off to the left a little, just kind of coming out from his own end zone, trying to return this thing out as that. 
And number two again, yeah, no, yeah, Mark. Jamari, yeah, Jamari Mark, the running back, takes it up and good job of special teams. Yeah, he just kind of drifted, caught it outside the end zone, took a step in and gets it out near the 20, so not a bad return, but starting a little deeper in their own end. So we'll see what the UWF defense can do here. I'm sure there was a lot of let, let's get some fluid in on a hot night. We've been chasing Hawthorne and company around a little bit. We we got We got to have that effort in the second half. Yeah, definitely. And Hawthorne and that offense is going to come out and look to attack and do some of the same things that worked for them in the first half. So uh, have to be disciplined here for the defense. And here we go. Second half. First play on offense. There's that option offense. You see just so many guys bunched around the line of scrimmage. It's a quick toss sweep to the left. The Argus do a nice job of stretching it out, but finally kind of cutting inside a little bit and getting up a field that is Drew Kroger, it, the senior running back. First time we've really seen him carry the ball tonight. Yeah, great job by the defense there, setting the edge. Uh, Sherrod Oliver, not going to be credited for anything on that play. And the penalty, actually a flag on the play, and, and it's on the Choctaw. It's going to back him up a little bit. Maybe had some motion before the snap, I think. think. so, think he, so. But Sherrod Oliver did a great job yeah. of setting the edge there, forcing the action back in. Running back, made, you know, did a, got started a little early, so that'll back you up. Let's see what the, move the ball back to the 12. So you're looking at first and about 18 now. Unless the spot was a little, yeah, a little short of the 20. So first and 15, it was a five yard penalty. Hand off to the inside, the big fall is right. And then all over it, host of tacklers, including Chandler Ferguson and our guy, Daryl Wilson. Big man. Let me hold him get this jersey back down here. Daryl Wilson. He, I think he had the pasta, the salad, and the cake. Yeah, game. all that. I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, you have Deion Holder getting in there, or Keon Holder, rather, getting in on the, on the action also. And uh, in these long yardage situations, it's not set up. Um, we've seen that with Carson Newman. It's not set up for those for those to be converting on those um, long yeah, yardage situations. Yeah, second 10 is not what this Choctaw offense wants to be dealing with. They set themselves back with a penalty, and Hawthorne's going to roll out. And here comes the pressure. That looked like a little jersey grab, but finally Hawthorne just goes down, and then Ferguson falls on him. There won't be a flag there, but I certainly thought there could have been a hole because it looked like the first guy in had a chance to get him. It did, and uh, looks like it may be a little tug there, uh, but the rest let the play on. Great job, Trent Archie. Yeah, Archie. Didn't contain, but luckily he had a couple Argos behind him to, to clean it up. Archie's done a nice job on the blitzing off the corner. We've seen that a couple times. In fact, the first possession he got in there and almost, you know, he, he forced a fumble and we couldn't, the Argos couldn't come up with it, but he's done a great job. And that was going to Hawthorne's left side. And that play here at us on last year, and what he likes to do is roll to the right. So great job by the defense. Third able to bring it down. And a country mile of 22. This is a play that you have to hold this Choctaw team deep in their own end. In fact, inside the five. And the offense is not going anywhere. The defense is all over at Wilson and company. Whistle blows and finally put on the ground is Hawthorne. That's, that's going to leave a mark. His jersey's coming off. And, uh, wow, what a start to the second half. The defense needed to do this, and they have come up. And, and Matthew Gotell, the big fellow in there, along with some others, Nice job of dialing up this from Coach Darian Doolin. Yeah, when you got Matthew Gotell in there, 305, and Hawthorne running the ball at 170, uh, 10 out of 10 <laughs> times, the 305 pound, the 305 pounder is going to win that battle. I don't, I didn't, I never took physics in college, but I'm pretty sure that you, you just passed. You just passed the class. That worked. <laughs> Immovable object, right? Yep. 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 That's that's some, that, that's it. So this could be big. McCarter's going to punt from his own back line of the end zone. He's calling for the snap. Here comes the pressure. Wow, almost got to him. It's a low driven kick. This is going to set up a return for Karan Ashley. Gets to the outside. Gets a couple blocks. He's going to put on a big return inside the 20. Out inside the 15. There it is. Special teams coming through after the defense sets the tone. The Argos are going to start inside the red zone in their first possession of the second half. Yeah, great job. We do have a flag on the play. See what it is. By the way, it looks like our ref has a wrap on under his pants. Maybe he has a sprained ankle. He's coming down. Let's see what the call is. You know, those, those are kind of scramble drills of their own on a punt return. So you just hope there wasn't a block in the back. We'll see what the call is coming from this crew. During the return, holding, return team number 39. 10-yard penalty, first down, West Florida. 10 yards from the spot, the hold, and somebody got a hand on somebody there. We'll see where the ball finally winds up. But we'll take a break and reset things for you here in a second. 14-7, just inside the start of this second half here on the UWF Sports Network. 
What does Argo Spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pre-game grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. St. Louis, Missouri. Back in here at Blue Wahoo Stadium, Will Kennedy and Jamie Smith with you. Argos back on offense after a fantastic defensive stand to start the second half. They got a big punt return from Karan Ashley, but a hole puts the ball back at the 38. It would have been inside the 15. And the first play going nowhere. Anthony Johnson, no running room as the Choctaws are all over that one. Yeah, that's going to be big man 58 for Mississippi College. And jumping in there, this this play. Fred Wash. <laughs> I want to see what happened up here at the front. Let's see the replay. Not just cool. yeah, he just swam past Devin Gibson and got right in there before Anthony Johnson could get going anywhere. Yeah, and that's just a missed assignment there by Gibson. Very uncharacteristic uh, at center position, but just not able to hold his guy off there. Senior center missing one there, so that'll bring up second and thirteen or twelve. Reed, plenty of time to throw. Good, strong throw out to the sideline, and that's what we were looking to see early, and that looks like the Austin Reed of the first couple of weeks as he finds Q, finds Quentin Randolph over there on the sidelines for a gain of about 12, it looks like. It's going to be near the sticks. Are they going to give him the first down? Looks, looks like, like the crew may be ready to move that thing. Second and inches. He may have turned up and gotten that. Yeah. No, they're going to call it third down. Third down and one. Maybe even closer than that. Yeah, third, yeah. I don't know. It's it's really close, but no measurement coming. So we'll say third and half a yard. Good strong throw from Austin Reed. Good job by the offensive line buying him some protection here. Plenty of time as they just moved the rush away. We're looking at the run again. So here we go. Third and half a yard. Johnson's got plenty of room here as he dances through, makes the guy miss, and then picks up four or five before he's finally brought down. Great vision there by Johnson. Uh, inside handoff. Nothing nothing crazy about this running play. Just football here. Does a great job, has great vision, and is almost able to make a guy miss there. Uh, looks like number eight from yeah. Mississippi. He got an uh, arm around Josh him. Miller, yeah. Held on for dear him. life, man. Yeah, nice job. I saw he went over there and said something to Devin Gibson after that run, like patted him on the head. So, you know, they, you know, tell him, hey. All is well. Yeah, I got you. We're, <laughs> we're, we're all in this together. So here you go. First down, Johnson again looking to bounce this thing to the outside. He does. He's got running room, and he puts the shoulder down. He's going to pick up a first down and a – a little bit more as he's punishing some of these Choctaw defenders with this football now. And uh, Coach Shinnick in this offense is obviously seeing something. They continue to run the ball. We do have a flag on the play, looks like. Uh, mistakes are going to be, let's see what the call is. Mistakes are going to be big here. If this is on UWF, this is, a, you know, the kind of thing that kills your momentum. Yeah. Offense, 10-yard penalty. Replay first down. That, that's huge. I mean, the first down run and the hole backs you up and that, you know, kind of takes the air out of the sails for a second. Yeah, you definitely can't have that. Just being behind in this ball game also and you putting together a great job like this, you don't want any type of penalties. Johnson had picked up seven on the carry for the first down and then the holding penalty backs this thing up. First and 20 now, so he, the hole was right there at the line of scrimmage at the beginning of that play. So you're, you're, well, I was going to say we're near field goal range, but we're not quite sure anymore. That throw led his receiver. What a heck of a catch from Kenneth Chanel. He took a big lick right there, and he's down on the field. 
Threading this ball in there is one thing for Austin Reed, but leading your receiver into a hit like that is another story. That's that's <laughs> their teammates. They'll work it out, but uh, receivers don't like that. I can tell you. Yeah, great catch by Chanel. Yeah, to hold, to on, hold to on to that ball, but that's tough. That's a hard hit there, and uh, you hope he's okay. Looks Maybe like he's going to get up. What was interesting on that play is Johnson released from the backfield and cut inside of Chanel and was wide open because the defender that should have picked up Johnson went. So you saw the two DBs went Chanel. around Chanel. So, you know, Reed, I think his first option was obviously Chanel, and that was a heck of a throw to get it in that window. But Coach he went, Shinnick yeah, cried about, about that. I think Coach Shinnick wants a targeting. The targeting penalty, yeah. yeah, and he did lead with his helmet a yeah. little bit. And I'm sure they'll go test him in the tent here, but yeah. uh, he hopes Chanel's okay. I mean, this is this is the focus of football now. It's supposed to be on that kind of play. Unfortunately, at this level, you don't get the chance for them to review that and take a look and, and see. And that's an ejection automatically if it is a targeting call. Good pickup, though, on the first and 20. Now you're looking at or second, is it second down or third. There's the run outside, and get turning around is Gardner. Nice job. I bet the, get he'll get pick up to the, the first. outside. Yeah, he's going to pick up the first down. And that's just the speed of Gardner. I mean, they run a stretch play for Gardner, and you usually see those stretches with Gardner or Shamari Mason. And with that speed, he's able to pick up the first down. So the penalty doesn't end up killing this drive at all. Argos move the ball deeper into Choctaw territory as Gardner. Beautiful run. It was 13 yards on the catch by Chanel. And then Gardner goes for seven to pick up the first down. The ball down to the 10 again. Is it going to be yeah, inside? It'll be first and goal from the 10. So we've got a player down from Mississippi College now. Somehow we keep ending up where we go down at the 11 <laughs> so, so we can pick up a first and now. No, it's first and, ten, first and goal from the 10 as we do have a Mississippi College player, but he gets up and he'll be helped off either. It's 58, the big fellow who jumped in there earlier to, to make the tackle. So, And that is Fred Wash, the defensive lineman, 6'1", 290. Yeah, Coach Shinnick was hot. You don't see Coach Shinnick get hot very often with the officials, very rarely. But that one, I think he really felt. I mean, obviously, if your player is in jeopardy like that and takes that kind of hit, you're going to feel pretty passionately well, about it. Yeah, you have to stick up for your players also. And uh, I think Coach Shinnick knew in his mind that that was a targeting penalty. It looks like something the refs just missed on that play. So a chance to cap this drive off. 9-15 left to play here in the third quarter. 14-7 Mississippi College on top at UWF. Down at the 10 in the red zone. Goal to go. A chance to get some points, potentially tie this game up. Gardner's in the backfield with Reed. Takes the handoff. Tests the left side of this line. He's got some running room. Gets a block from Joe Wintrick up there and goes inside the five as Wintrick had pulled and was rolling that way to the left. And that's a lot of beef. That's a yeah. lot of beef out in front. When you got Joe Wintrick out in front of you, you should be you should feel pretty yeah. comfortable. And uh, Jalen Gardner picks up a decent gain on that play, maybe six, maybe yeah. six yards on that play. Nice job, I think. Was that Tate Tate Latio in there with a nice seal on the outside from wide receiver? When your wide receivers can block like that, it really helps the running game. So here we go, ball at the four, second and goal to go. Argos were down here one or the other end in the in the first half. Came away with nothing after a fumble. This time Gardner goes down to about the one, so that'll set up third and goal from the one. And really, this yeah, you like to see this. Let's just power this football in. Let's let's let the running game. Let's set the tone that we're here to play in the second half. Yeah, and the big guys are doing a great job, and I don't see why you wouldn't go back to a running play here. That O line is doing a great job of getting that initial push off the line of scrimmage. So three receivers out, though, two on the far side of the field. Gardner stays in the backfield. Reed's going to keep it. Extra blocker, and he's in easy. The untouched touchdown Argos, Austin Reed. Haven't seen that in a while. He had a couple of those with some physical punishment back in the shorter game, but he's going to take this thing and cut it to a one-point game. What a start to the second half, defensively and offensively for this Argo football team. How about that? Walks in untouched. Has that extra brockler out, out in front of him and Jaden Gardner. And uh, that's just that ex extra wrinkle we talked about earlier in the ball game uh, that this offense does have with a more athletic quarterback in there like Reed. And uh, they utilize that on the goal line there. It's, it's that extra body. It makes it hard to cover up everybody when the quarterback runs the football. So Alex Virgilio is in to try the PAT. He made his first one after missing a field goal. Kick is up, kick is good, and we are tied up 14 to 14. We thought this would be a heck of a football game. It is turning into that and then some. We are all tied 750 to play here in the third quarter of this one. You're listening to Argo Football here on the UWF Sports Network. What does Argo Spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? 
Is it giving back while getting your pregame grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. For those who sweat in determined pursuit, and those who meet the morning with a firm handshake and a smile, and breathe between stages of unwavering effort. Andrews Institute, for those who move. What's even better than going to a UWF football game? Going with all your friends. Decks are available for groups between 25 and 200 people. All group decks come with a UWF football game ticket, food, and soft drinks. It's great for company outings, group functions, birthday parties, and youth groups. Prices start as low as $25 per person. Call 850-474-2746 for more information or to book your deck today. Sandra, how do I turn this thing Back here at Blue Wahoo Stadium. 14-14, now it's a hot night. Austin Reed, UWF quarterback. This is what has to happen. That's Jake with the training staff making sure his quarterback doesn't cramp up. Nice start to the second half here. If you're an Argos fan, Mississippi College and UWF tied up at 14. It's just under eight to play here in the third quarter. This has been a game of, of momentum swings, to say the least, Jamie Smith. Definitely has. And, I mean, you see Mississippi College come out, throw their heavyweight shots early throwing haymakers with the interception and the, and the nice drive downfield. Um, but you see UWF kind of getting the momentum back here with a nice drive. And uh, with that defense settling in, this is the UWF team that we are mo more, more accustomed to seeing. Colton Norris feeling it right there as the, the highlighter shoes punches that one deep into the end zone. No return, so the Choctaws will start at their own 25. That drive, nine plays, went 38 yards. And leads to a tie football game, 14-14. They just had the time of the drive, then all of a sudden disappeared from, from the official stats. <laughs> the page I'm looking at. Regardless, you saw the defense come out, set the tone on the first possession for Mississippi College, and then the offense pick right up where the defense handed it off to them and, and take that thing down, despite a holding call on the punt return and a holding call that left them with a first and 20. That's impressive to come up with a touchdown. Yeah, and the missed assignment by Devin Gibson, uh, but that wasn't, that wasn't hurting them there. Right with the carry, going to pick up about five on first down in the middle of the line. So a nice job. And again, we've talked about it week in and week out of, of having all these bodies defensively and the opportunity to rotate a bunch of guys in. And I got a feeling before this one is said and done, that's going to play a big role. Definitely. And uh, I think that just speaks to the depth that this defense has. And uh, this depth on the whole team this year. Uh, I know last year with the injuries and everything, they wanted to come in and have that depth with this with this team. Here we go. Second down and five. We'll see if the Choctaws have found an answer. And it's going to be Hawthorne with the carry. And, boy, he's tough to bring down. Dances through. And this is where he creates trouble. He is almost impossible to get in the open field. He's going to pick up big yards and then some before he steps out of bounds. And you just saw his quickness and his elusiveness on that run. Yeah, and that's where he hurts you. If you let him – if you can't make that initial tackle – and let him get to the outside where he wants to hurt you, uh, you're going to see him do that. And that's that's his specialty. I mean, make you miss, and and, and you're going to pay for it. Daryl Wilson got an arm on him up high, but that's not enough to bring him down when he, you're moving one way and he's moving the other way. So he's going to get 27 on the carry. The ball out at the UWF 43 now. Choctaws are on the move in a tie ball game. And chunk plays, that's what this offense lives for. Yeah, they're looking for those opportunities to get – players like Hawthorne and some of these other guys into space. Here we go out of that triple option again. Quick handoff in the middle the full the old fullback dive. Got a, a staple. Flag. flag on the play. Yeah. And flag. it's down the field too. Yeah, from the back judge there. So he saw something probably. I'm not sure if it was in motion or yeah, it had to be something man early because the ball, the ball never got into his area. Illegal substitution defense. Five-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay, first down. Wow. So there's a there's a mistake trying to get the guy on the field. Cost the Argos five yards. Yeah, and those will hurt you here. 
uh, especially here. I mean, you, you, you came back and you tied the game up. Uh, you don't want to give Mississippi College that momentum right back. You give this offense a first and five, and it, it kind of increases the, the, the different options that they have out of this option offense, and we'll see what they do on a first and short. They're going to go right back to that dive again. A nice job bouncing off the initial tackler, picking up a couple yards, and that's right again, finally hammered down by the Argo defense. And they're going to get the first down. Just an inside handoff here to the Jordan Wright. And you see, like, Jamari Mark getting in there to block. These other running backs do a nice job of coming off the football and getting into some guys on the second level. So the offensive line only has to focus on what's right in front of them. And Coach Shinnick talked about that prior to the game here. Uh, they have a, a, a stable of running backs, but they're all pretty good at hiding behind the O-line and able to burst out at the last possible moment. Wright gets five, ball at the 33 now. First and ten for the Choctaws there in UWF's end, looking to answer. And that's going to be a big hit. Ball's on the ground, and the Argos are going to fall on top of this one. And there the defense just comes up, and you said it, Jamie Smith, we need a turnover. There's your turnover. There we go. We got it. That's gonna, Big boy. Is that going to be uh, – is, is that Wilcox, one of the Wilcox brothers yeah, there? I think it is. 96 jumping in there. you got to love the Wilcox twins. Yeah, Andrew. Yep. Andrew Wilcox gets in on that one. Andrew and Alex are 94, 96, and that looks like 96. I think I can tell that in the green jerseys, but beautiful job. Yeah, that's a great defense. job, even better job by Gail Loren. Yeah, in Gail. place of the hurt Andre Duncan tonight who forced that pitch out there and uh, Wilcox just falling <laughs> on it. At the right time, pretty pumped up there, and that's what this team needs right now. I feel like Gale played a fantastic game last week against Lynchburg and really seems to be coming into his own. We've seen him carry that into this week, and that's the nice thing about this defense. You want to see consistency. By the way, the turnover shield, there it is, Gale and, and Andrew getting into that. That's a, an Argo tradition here. Jason and the Argonauts as we got a run on first down. Nice gain. One number four making it happen on defense. Another number four making it happen on offense as Javon Newton gets in there for the big first down carry. Let's move the sticks. First down Argos. But to finish, you know, the whole Greek mythology that the Argonauts had their shields and their swords and everything. So you sign the turnover shield when you force or get a turnover. It looks like they got a little basketball hoop connected on the end of that turnover there's been this, shield There's been now. this whole thing with Duncan uh, the football in a garbage can after turnovers at practice. So, yeah, so maybe that's, that's new. That's become a new yeah, every year, right? New wrinkles. So here we go. Speaking of new wrinkles, we'll see what the offense has in store. They're going to go back to Newton again, and he's going to get big yards again. And right now you are seeing some gash plays on the inside with his running game. And that defense just got off the field. Uh, so they may just be a little tired still. And Newton uh, doesn't care, making him pay for it right now. Gained 14 the previous rush, and looks like he'll get about eight or nine on this game yeah. for another first down. They'll, they'll probably give him 13. 14 to 13, so 27 yards on back-to-back -back carries, and all of a sudden you're in Mississippi College into the field. Ball at about the 36 as the Argos are threatening again after tying the game up with their first possession of the second half. Reed sends his tight end back to his right. Single back back there with him is Newton. Newton's going to get his third carry in a row, and look, dances, and then You'd like to see that. It, it's not the big gainer again, but he got in there and pushed that That's pile forward. A There's a little shot at the end. No flag coming. Yeah, the, I think they're just going to go with that's just football right there. <laughs> a little extracurricular. <laughs> I guess that's in the eye of the, of the, like, of the holder. I think Austin Reed's lobbying the, the, the official for the call, too. But nice job. And just the leg push before finally getting <laughs> Sam Antoine trying to push everybody forward. Yeah, great push by that O-line. They'll get four in that play. Yeah, it's a, it's a positive gain. I guess when you've seen back-to-back, 13, 14 yard carries. Not as sexy, but sexy enough because now you're looking at second and six, and here we go. Newton will stay in the game. Let's let's ride the horse, right? Here we go. Newton's gonna push that pile forward again, pick up a couple. I think Shamari Mason in the game that time. Is that Mason? Five. Yeah. Yep. If that's so, we haven't seen him yet. We really felt like he played fantastic at the end of last week. And that's more of your quick back, yeah. quick a little bit twitch smaller. type guy. Yeah, and he's able to hide behind the O-line there. Pick up about another three on that play. That'll bring up, yes. bring up second and three, second, third and three. Third and three, third and short, manageable. We'll see. I mean, so that this is that kind of interesting for a play caller like Pete Shinnick, who, by the way, as head coach, does call the plays, is basically the de facto offensive coordinator. I think you got Your playbook is open here on a third and three from this part of the field, but you go back to the running game because it's worked, and Newton back in there, and I think Newton's – one step away as he makes the, the stiff arm, puts the first guy down, and really was one 
defender away from taking that thing to the house. Yeah, great job. Great play call with the blitz coming up the middle. They hand it off to Javon oh. Newton on that misdirection, and he gives you a, a thank you and uh, have a nice day stiff arm. <laughs> Able to get the first down. The Argos are knocking on the door here. If he would have thrown the hurdle over that last defender in there with the stiff arm, that might have been an ESPN-type <laughs> play. Newton, look at him rolling here. Seven carries, 67 yards, almost 10 yards a carry at this point in the ball game. He'll go forward again. He's got to be a little tired at this point, but he just puts the head down, falls forward, picks up a couple. Yeah, Devin Gibson getting in there, protecting his running back. Uh, but Javon Newton, uh, great job. Just, you know, shouldering the load for this offense, this drive. 67 yards, probably about 72 now with that carry, but does a great job of just plugging it up the middle there. I'll give him a couple on that carry. Sets up a second and eight, seven or eight, so it's hard to tell. It, it, they had the same issue spotting this thing for the scoreboard as we do from where we're sitting, but it certainly looks like he maybe got three on that. And yeah, now they change it to second and seven. So here we go, second down and seven. The ball at the 14 in the red zone again. Argos threatening to take the lead in this one. Hand off misdirection. This one kind of never really got going anywhere, and Newton just tried to cut it back, but instead is going to lose a couple, I think, on that carry. Yeah, Newton tried to be patient that time. I thought maybe he might have had something open to the outside there, uh, but yeah. maybe too patient as the Choctaws gang tackle on that play. He had Joe Wintrick had locked up after pulling out there with one guy, and there were two guys behind, but if he were to cut off Wintrick's back, maybe he has a chance to pick up a couple. Mason will check into the game now, replacing Newton. Dimitri Birch is coming at wide receiver as well. So three receivers out to Austin Reed's right. Coach is the single wide out on the short side of the field. They're going to throw here Tate on Lateef. third and nine. Newt, uh, Reed with plenty of time, and he fires that ball in. Coach catches it. I think he Coach thought he stepped out of bounds, but he might have been inbounds, and then there was confusion. But either way, it's a first down. <laughs> yeah, not sure uh, if Coach stepped out or not. All day to throw and a good ball in there. Maybe he had a knee down. I think that might have been He it. never stepped out, and he was going to try to, like, basically slide step up the sideline, electric slide into the end zone if he could. Great throw by Reed. Yeah. Great there, throw uh, by Reed. It really comeback. looked like it came close to the defender's fingertip. Great job by our crew here with that replay. Fantastic. So here you go. Ball inside the five. First down. You go back to Newton. Newton punishing defenders. Finally going to be stacked up as it looked for a second like he might push the pile towards the end zone. Instead, he'll pick up maybe a gain of one or two, pushing the ball closer to the goal line. Yeah, great push there, getting some help there. Uh, Newton, another tough run, maybe two or three on that play, but knocking on the door here. You'll wonder if they were warding for all that hard work uh, second, with, a, with a touchdown here. Second goal here from the three, maybe the two, right at the two. It looks like we're going to get a timeout here. We'll take this break with the team. 14-14, Argos threatening in this one. We've got a good game as we go to the fourth quarter here. You're watching the Argos and listening on the UWF Sports Network. What does Argo spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pregame grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. Back with you to start the fourth quarter. Will Kennedy, Jamie Smith here on ESPN Pensacola on your radio, Cox Sports TV, and your view TV in Florida as well. 
Beautiful night, a little bit warm here by the Bay. Blue Wahoo Stadium, we got a good game. 14-14 as we start the fourth quarter with the Argos threatening second down, goal to go from about the two-yard line on another impressive drive here by this Argo offense in the second half of this one. Yeah, ball on the two-yard line, so you really have any situation. I mean, you can go anywhere from here, uh, pass or run. Javon Newton is in the ball game right now, so we'll see if they choose to let him run the ball. And before we start, the referees come out and wave it off, and Coach Shinnick's walking out on the field. We'll see. Is he calling a timeout or what? Coach Shinnick has something to say here to the officials as they try to sort out whatever it is going on. Let me get that right. It is your view, Florida. And they told me to pronounce it. It's not pronounced like Y-O-U-R. It's just Y-U-R. Y-U-R. Your view. Yeah, that's the new lingo there these days. There we go. <laughs> We love this because we these home games, we get the opportunity to simulcast on the radio and also bring you these games on TV as well. So it looks like we'll take another quick time out here, but we'll, we'll probably keep it here in stadium with you. Feel like shaking up your shake routine. Oh, we're going to take one. Never mind. Let me, let me cut that short. We'll take another break with the two teams here. 14-14 is your score here on the UWF Sports Network. In an emergency. What does Argo Spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pre-game grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. We're back here at Blue Wahoo Stadium. Start of the fourth quarter. We'll finally get a, get a shot here. <laughs> Second and goal. Argos threatening to take the lead in this one. Another handoff. Newton again. Punishes. Falls into the end zone. Touchdown, Argos. Jervon Newton is the man tonight. He had 50 yards on this drive alone before that carry. We'll give him about two more. How about that? How about that? Sealing the deal for Javon Newton, able to cap that drive off, all that hard work, able to get the touchdown at the end. Love to see the off. Sam Antoine comes running off the field like a little kid who just got released for recess on a Friday afternoon because this offensive line loves to punish people the way they're doing. Taking a look during the break at the third quarter statistics as we wait the PAT from Alex Regilio that will give the Argos, if converted, a seven-point lead. Snap is good, hold is good, the kick is up, and it is good. Good, strong kick. Just like that, 21 to 14 is the score. The Argos take a touchdown lead after trailing by 14. They have ripped off 21 unanswered points. I was going to say, looking at the third quarter statistics, you know, you never know who's going to step up and be the guy for you on any given night. We've seen Anthony Johnson run the ball well in previous weeks. Not that he's not running the ball well tonight, but. Javon Newton, through three quarters, had 11 carries for 75 yards, averaging almost seven yards a carry. Gardner hitting it, too. He had 12 for 47. And then Johnson had chipped in with 35 yards. And, of course, Newton's going to pick up another couple there, too. So you're really seeing that distribution. And Mason's come in and had a nice run, too. So you're seeing that ability to mix these running backs that we saw kind of developing last week continue this week yeah and I, I mentioned it last week and I mean this team just has so much depth and so many guys that can do it and I mentioned they reminded me of kind of like the New England Patriots they just have you know guys that can do it every week and you never know because it's not one guy it could be like a Rex Burkhead a Sony Michelle 
Uh, you know, it's just some, some different guy that does it every week, and you see that here with the Argos. Ten plays, 63 yards, five and a half minutes off the clock. So a dominant kind of drive to help kind of break this game open here at this point as far as putting the Argos on top. And really, I mean, obviously it's still close. Anything happens at this point is we've still got basically a whole third quarter to go. But when a team, when one team has ripped off 21 straight points in a game like this, you definitely feel the momentum. This home crowd is, has stuck around, and they're into this game now. How about this defense for the Argos playing, playing really well? This one higher in the air. And a fair catch at your one? He, wa he waved his arm clearly. Yeah, so, yeah, well, he's, that's right. I forget that rule changes. But it's always one of those weird ones where, like, why not just let it bounce through the end zone at that point? But what happens if you drop that? Well, then you got to pick up and scramble. <laughs> if, uh, you, if you've called a fair catch and you don't catch it, so – They'll take it out to the 25. Yeah, but this defense playing a great game tonight. They haven't given <laughs> – this defense has, hasn't given up or Mississippi College hasn't scored an offensive touchdown since yeah, that seven minutes and 39 seconds into that, into that first in that first quarter. And I think back that drive was so dominant for Mississippi College, and they really haven't done much offensively since then, as you mentioned, Jamie. So here we go. They'll start at their own 25. They need to answer at this point. Hawthorne with a quick throw out. That thing way over the head of Cole Rotenberry, and I think that's – that's basically Dietrich Hawthorne in a nutshell. Athleticism off the charts, but the accuracy on a pretty simple kind of throw to a wide receiver is just way over his head. Yeah, they try to run a quick action play here to uh, Thorntonberry on the outside. Uh, and man coverage over there with Oliver. But, you know, the ball just sails a little bit. And we haven't seen Hawthorne throw to a lot tonight and a lot this season. No, he's, he's, not, he's not a throwing quarterback. It's usually a broken play, as we've said a couple times now, and this is not where they want to be, behind the sticks, second and ten. Normally they're trying to pick up some positive yards on first down. This one tossed to the outside to Mark. Good job pursuing by the defense. He'll pick up three, but this UWF defense is flowing to the football at this point. Yeah, and they look like they're playing with a little bit more confidence in this second half, uh, in this fourth quarter here. As Ty Cox, Ty Cox gets yeah, in on the action there on the tackle. But this defense is playing really well. You love to see a big guy like Cox pursue a play down the line of scrimmage. Trent Archie couldn't keep that thing turned inside, but his teammates got his back and come pull, pull in from behind and bring the guy down. So here we go, second, third and seven. Third and seven now. More receivers out this time, one on each side. Shotgun. Out of the shotgun, a little bit different look. And here comes the pressure, and this is where you got to keep him in check. And they do. They get to him, and there's a sack. I think it's the sixth of the season, some pushing after the play. Is that Gail Laurent that got in there again? Yes, it is. Number four, making it happen. Great job by Gail. They able to not over-pursue because Hawthorne was looking to bounce that out to the outside there, and Gail just held on for dear life. Dear life, and uh, he'll get the sack. And Interesting that, team get you know, off the field. Hawthorne loves to flip around and go the other way. You almost feel like he could have run away from Gale. Gale just had him by the pants. And he, it's like he tried to turn back. He turned right back into Gale. But hanging on to dear life. Here we go. McCarter into punt again. So another three and out for this defense. They're going to give the football right back to a red-hot dominant offense. Snap. Here it comes. This kick, another good one. Kind of wobbly end over end. A little short, actually. That's trouble. Did he touch it? No, Birch. Danced away from it, so it'll be down by Mississippi College. Argos are going to go back on the offensive again. This one is 21 to 14 now. 13-11 left to play in the ball game. The Argos on top here. You're listening and watching to the UWF Sports Network. You can't stop it. That undeniable charge. So bright. So loud. It rips through the clutches of mediocrity. It breaks down walls, blazes past old ways of thinking. It's creativity, pure electric energy. What will you do with it? The University of West Florida, no limits. Look at that. Five glorious inches of Whataburger. Fresh 100% beef stacked high with melted cheese and fresh cut veggies. What if it's too much fresh beef? Stacked too high with too much melted cheese and too many fresh cut veggies. Well, we have a four inch burger like a lot of other places. We just call it a junior. Good thing there's a burger made just for you. Good thing there's Whataburger. For those
those who sweat in determined pursuit, and those who meet the morning with a firm handshake and a smile, and breathe between stages of unwavering effort. Andrews Institute, for those who move. Welcome back in here to the University of West Florida broadcast tonight from Blue Wahoo Stadium in Pensacola, Florida. 13-11 left in this one. 21-14, the Argos lead the Mississippi College Choctaws. First down, 10 to go from their own end. Try a stretch play out to the right. Anthony Johnson is pulled down. I think he wants that one back. He could have cut that up a little earlier maybe. Yeah, great tackle there by Josh Miller. Uh, great open field tackle as Anthony Johnson tried to give him that stiff arm. Or actually flies in there. That's going to be Luke 10. Wilson. Yeah, Luke yeah, Wilson. Luke Wilson. Sorry, uh, able to bring him down for a loss of four. Not not that Luke Wilson. This is the Mississippi College <laughs> Luke Wilson. So here we go. Argos back on offense, looking to put some more points on the board. They have ripped off 21 straight after being down 14 nothing in what was a fairly miserable start to this ball game for Coach Pete Shinnick and company. Things have really turned around. They lead by seven here in this one. Here we go, another run and play. Dancing through a hole and cutting it up for some positive yardage after losing a few on first down. Johnson tries to get those back, and he'll get just about all of them back, but that's going to bring up a third and ten. Third and ten. Uh, Maybe third and eleven. Not a lot of running room to go there for Johnson. He sees, a, I mean, a host of defenders waiting on him, and he just puts his head down and gets what he can. And that's back to, the, to back to where the drive initially started. That'll bring in a change at running back. J Jaden Gardner will come in and, Line up in the backfield with Austin Reed. Tight end in this set, three wide receivers, two out to the left, one to the right. So third and 11, it's a passing down. Plenty of time. Reed's got a scramble, and he's going to tuck this thing up. He's over the line of scrimmage. That's going to be a penalty. Maybe not. Did he somehow stay behind the line? Looked to me like he had rolled a little too far. Is there a flag down? Very close. Yeah, yeah it, looked to, it looked to me like he had just kept it a, maybe one or two steps too far. That'll be a loss of down and, a, and back it up. So a punt probably coming either way here. We'll see what the call is. Illegal forward pass. Offense, number 14. Five-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. A loss of down. Fourth down. It'll hurt a little more as they'll have to punt the football back. So just as dynamic as they were on the last drive. Stuck in park on this drive, unable to get anything going, so they'll give the football back to the Choctaw. So we talked about it. It's been a wild game as far as momentum swings. You would figure the Argos had it all in their favor at that point, but unable to get untracked again after really just running the football down the Choctaw's throat on the last drive, unable to get the running game untracked on this drive. So Dawson Hamlin, 52 yards on his first punt. He's been averaging about 42. The snap a little low. He gets this one away. This one's more of an end over end, and it's going to bounce again. Good bounce. Another great kick. Another great kick. And we go out inside the 20, so two tonight that he has just absolutely gotten a hold of. Talk with Coach Shinnick about Dawson and, and just the fact that he really gives you what you want from a punter. Good hang time, good directional kicking, and the ability to pin a team inside the 20. Yeah, and, um, I mean, he has a strong leg. I mean, you've seen it with the 52-yard punt tonight. Uh, just a great punter, able to flip sides like that. That's a great weapon to have in special teams. You put your, your defense, which has been the last couple times they've been on the field, have been kind of a, almost a predatory defense looking. You, you feel like we, you forced one turnover. I almost feel like there might be another one coming here as Mississippi College gets a little more, not desperate, they're only down seven, but what they're doing maybe isn't working and they got to try something different. Every time Dietrich Hawthorne throws the football, you never quite know what the outcome is going to yeah, be. Yeah, and you see they have uh, two bunched out to the right here. Yeah, they got a couple receivers out here to the right. At their own 18, first down, and Hawthorne's going to throw, and the defense was in on him in a hurry. He gets this one out, kind of a duck out to Rotenberry near the sideline. But, boy, he had a defender right in his face. Trent Archie again off the corner, I think. Yeah, that's a great job oh, by he Archie. almost got a hand on it, Yeah, too. he really did. That's a great catch by uh, yeah. Thornberry over there on the, on, the, on the field. Right on the boundary, yeah, absolutely. And I think that's a great case of where Trent is breaking down and not allowing – Dietrich Hawthorne to run, he's going to force him to throw the football. And that's what we spoke about earlier in the show, make him hurt you with his arm. Second and six now. This time the receivers move over to the left side. A keeper, a nice block up front, and that's going to spring Hawthorne for a first down. He's finally forced out. 
over in front of his own bench. Yeah, design QB run there. And uh, he just got the defense flowing one way and used his quickness to go and, uh, you know, design that quarterback run to the right side. Able to get a nice chop block out there by his lineman, uh, number 77, Cordell Burge. And uh, that's enough for the first down. DeAnthony Bell finally forcing him out, but not before he could pick up that first down and move the stick. So Choctaws, at least early in this drive, back on the move again as they trail by seven with 10.26 left to play in this ball game. Back to that more traditional triple option look. There's the fullback dive again, and no, no room for right to run as the middle of that green wall just closes up on him in a hurry. Yeah, the ugly green wall <laughs> coming in for the stop there. It looks like Gail Arant in in the action again. Yeah, Gail has played a monster game, and really, you know, you kind of see it's always deceiving. Oh, big fella in there too. That 97, is that Kelly? Getting involved in the middle of that line as well. So love to see T.J. Kelly fire off the ball. But Gale, one of the, I think a lot of times when linebackers wear single digits, it's deceptive as to how big they really are. He, he's a bigger guy than, than the number four makes him look. Yeah, single digits are thinning. I wear those when I go <laughs> yeah. out. No, no to, to gentlemen. <laughs> wear the single digits. It, makes you, it thins you a little bit. Here we go. Another go right back to it again. Right this time is able to get through a hole and pick up a couple. That'll set up a third and about five, maybe four. We'll see where the, the spot is. There's a big play right here for, for Mississippi College and for this UWF defense, third and five, maybe six, actually, to yep. see what they can if they can keep this drive alive. They really need to keep their defense off the field, even though it was a three and out last time. They've got to be still a little tired after being gashed on that long drive. Yeah, haven't had success running the ball up the middle. We'll see if they choose to let Hawthorne, Hawthorne do his thing outside of the pocket with throwing or design quarterback run. Two receivers out to his left. Hawthorne is going to drop back. He's going to look to throw, but then he's going to scramble. Nice job of extending him, and the defense is all over him. And it's not a turnover, but it's really just about as good as a couple of Argos get to Dietrich Hawthorne before he can go anywhere. And the same exact running play. They get the offense going one way, but this time the defense flows great. And a great job by yeah. Gail Laurent turning that back to his help. In the middle. Chandler Ferguson's in there. All so over is, it. So is Bell. I mean, they got a bunch of guys wrapping that play up. There's Bradley in as well. Yeah, you 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 nailed, hit the nail on the head. Gale eats up two blockers right there and really forces the quarterback to bounce outside and, and really back up field a little bit before he turns it up. So that'll force another punt for McCarter, who's really, he's kind of, he's got a leg workout tonight. It's leg day. Leg day for the punter at Mississippi College. And this one's a good one. Rips this thing high again. Fair I'll catch is called one. for. Uh, he waved a hand for a fair catch. So Karan Ashley will give his offense the ball again. Another chance. 21 to 14 is our score. Just a little more than eight minutes to play in this game. Mississippi College, UWF. The Argos lead at 21 14 here on the UWF Sports Network. What does Argo Spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pre-game grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. Back here, ready to pick up play again. 8.02 left, 21-14, UVF on top of Mississippi College as we will resume play. The Argos start another drive, this time from their own 29-yard line, and there's that man again. 
into the middle of the line. Another carry. Not, not as big as some of the earlier games, but Jervon Newton has really been, he's been the running back tonight. Jervon Newton, another carry that time. That'll be his 13th carry on the night, and that's going to put him well over 80 yards uh, total. But he's just put on that load for this uh, this offense and, I mean, does, has done a great job so far. He's done a nice job of, like, you know, some running backs, and, and Anthony does this, A.J. does this occasionally, where he'll, he'll kind of delay and look for the hole. Newton almost looks like he gets up to the line and then tries to squeeze through one, uh, you know, a little bit a little bit quicker into the line in a game like this. It seems to be what is working. So here we go. Second down and about six. They'll go back to Newton again. There he goes again. Dancing through the middle, moving the sticks. He's going to pick up six, seven. On the carry, enough for a first down. Argos move the chains. And I know Coach Shinnick is loving this drive. The clock continues to tick, and you continue to move the ball downfield. And if they can score on this play, or this drive, rather, um, this puts the game uh, far out of the so. reach for Mississippi College, especially with the type of offense that they run. 14 carries for 89 yards before that one. I didn't see the official mark that they gave him, but he, Jerron Newton may get to 100 yards tonight, which would be a heck of a performance on limited carries. They give him eight on that one up the middle. Newton back at it again, bounce to the outside, makes a guy miss. Really elusive tonight, missability, is that a word? We can make it we'll one. We'll make it one. He's got it going tonight as he's closing in on that 100-yard mark for sure. Yeah, you see him there. They get him on the inside handoff oh. again, bounces out to the outside, one missed tackle there, another one there. And missability on, on, on 100 how, tonight for Javon Newton. Jamie, how good is that plant on the right foot that he throws down to cut? You know, either way, he's done, we've seen him go both ways tonight, but he, he will make that decision. He'll see something, put that foot in the ground, and take it up. Yeah, field. that's good vision. I mean, and to do that on a dime like that takes real athleticism as well. Here we go. Second down, six to go. It's Mason in the game now. Mason finds a crease. He'll make a few guys miss. In fact, even takes a blow and rolls for another yard or two at the end, and he's telling everybody, I got this. And My you, time. And you talk about <laughs> missability, uh, yeah. Will. I mean, this guy, Mason, we seen it last week. Woo. Just a bottle rocket out of the backfield. I mean, look at – able to make a couple guys miss, takes a hit and picks up a couple more. He gets 12 on the carry. I'm not going to say that I could have done what he did, but they opened up a hole big enough that I might have fallen forward for about three. Easily. The, the other nine were all Mason. <laughs> Yeah, he's a, he's a bottle rocket out of that backfield. Offensive line back to kind of what they were doing two drives ago of really putting it on this Mississippi College defense up front. Here you go, Mason again puts his foot in the ground. Not a big hole, but he's going to get up and turn it up for a couple Absolutely. yards. And again, I know Pete Shinnick, is, yeah, you can see the coaches on the bench as a guy comes flying in at the end, helmet down, yeah, crown down, and, and you kind of wonder with this officiating crew, that's supposed to be a no-no at any level of football. Yeah, Mason looked I mean, like he was going to the ground there. I know Mason's low to the ground, but that, oh, that's leading with your helmet. There is no doubt about that. That's That's got to be called. Yeah, he didn't even at, pick up his head there. Yeah, uh, at, this, at this level, that's, that's a must call. So I know Coach Shinnick will be unhappy with that. That'll bring up the down and distance here now. Second down and about nine after a short gain on first down. They'll go back to the run again. Really, I think what you're seeing is just trying to, as you mentioned, Coach Schenck, just trying to run the clock as we're down to about four and a half minutes. And now you put yourself in a, in a situation where you may have to throw the ball. Yeah, third and long situation. Uh, you probably go with a passing, of uh, uh, something passing here. But and you're in a position where you can throw quick, uh, you know, third and seven or so, you know, get one of those quick passes that we've seen the last couple times. That Reed's had some success here in the second half, finding somebody over near the boundary with a quick out. Really haven't seen much to the middle of the field in a while, Jamie. Haven't, and Tate Latia has been quiet tonight, and he is lined up in the slot right now. I would love to see something uh, with Latio, uh, one of those you know traditional Latio crossing yeah. routes towards the middle here. They're giving him some cushion off the line, that's for sure. The defender that's playing it is giving him, and we're going to go deep down the field, and you mentioned Latio, and there it is, but it's overthrown. He had him. Latio had a step on Rotenberry. And Quentin Randolph's got his arms up in the air basically saying, oh, it was there. You had him beat. And Reed just put a little too much air under this. Yeah, great route by Latio. Totally had him. That's a touchdown if it's on the money. Yeah, two, three steps on his guy and just uh, overshot him there. I know Reed wish he could have had that one back. Out of field goal range here. I am a little – I mean, I, and I think it's it, – you know, it's what we expect from Coach Shinnick and company to, to go for it in a situation like that. If you can hit the home run, as you just said, Jamie, the game's probably over if you score right there. 
Instead, you you know you send your punter out and you got a chance to pin them deep. You're not really in field goal range. But you know, could you have thrown something short, and maybe picked up a first down and kept this drive alive? I don't. Hey, Coach Shinnick makes the big bucks. I'm not going to question it. <laughs> There's going to be a timeout called because I think Mississippi College has got to start thinking about the clock a little bit, as you, as we've as we've said that you're not really a big play offense. We'll take a break with the two teams right here and get back for basically the stretch run here on the UWF Sports Network. You got me falling hard, sweet baby. You got me falling hard for you. It's you. I felt this way before. You know it's you. It's you. You got me more and more. Oh, you got me falling hard. Here at CPC, you're not just a customer, you're part of the family. We operate seven offices throughout the Florida Gulf Coast and Alabama regions with nearly 100 employees to best serve you, the customer. So thank you to all of the thousands of businesses who have helped to make us a leader in the office technology industry for more than 45 years. We will continue to provide a level of service that can't be copied and look forward to the bright future that lies ahead for our communities, cities, and country. What does Argo Spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pre-game grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. Sandra, we back with you here from Blue Wahoo Stadium. 346 left to play. 21-14 is the score. The Argos on top, and they will punt the football away to Mississippi College. Whistles before we can get this thing underway. Dawson Hamlin back to punt. He's hit two pretty good ones tonight, including a 52-yarder pinned at Mississippi College inside their 20 both times, and he's looking to do that again. This will go against UWF. Not necessarily a bad thing. Maybe give him a little bit more room. Yeah, a little more room to, to let this thing go. Hamlin, these kickers in their shoes, man. He's got the blue ones on, the, the bright blue. We see Colton out there with uh, his his highlighter ones. and We need Virgilio to get some orange, yeah. ones, orange ones now, and that'll, that'll seal it. Make something happen. The, the wobbly on the snap, and then we're going to get another whistle before. It's going to go against the Argos again. Foster. It was on. Ball start. Offense, number 18, five-yard penalty, fourth down. If you've been in the broadcasting business, like you can relate to what that man just had to deal with. Is he had to rip his earpiece out because he's probably had massive feedback into his brain. But two penalties is not really probably, you know, one, hey, a little more room to punt. The second one is kind of like, hey, what are we doing here? Interesting setup here for the punt for UWF. If you're seeing this for the first time, it's, Guy's kind of all over the place. Great Damn, point. Rips this one end over end. It's going to be fair caught. And again, pinning Mississippi College inside their own 15. Dawson Hamlin gets the job done. Really having a heck of a night after this is a guy who we mentioned earlier did not punt the ball once last week. He's, he's doing his thing tonight. I'm going to nominate him early for punter of the year of the GSC, but, you know, there's, we got a ways to go, but he's got an early lead in my book. Yeah, no, he's definitely, <laughs> I mean, he is a weapon on that special teams and, I mean, flips the field for you. Done it. I mean, he did the same thing last year. It's just more the same from Hamlin. Hamlin is, you know, one of those those guys you need to have, a veteran kind of punter like that. By the way, uh, Dietrich Hawthorne, the quarterback for Mississippi College, he was all-conference as an all-around guy last year, not as a quarterback and you're getting the opportunity to see what he can do. This throw behind his receiver, but a nice grab is made, and that's going to move the sticks. Yeah, they sneak the tight end out there in that option, and Hawthorne throws it, uh, able to actually, still a little off, yeah. off, 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 a little unaccurate Over the shoulder, there. yeah. yeah that's but, actually uh, another one of the him. running backs. That's Drew Kroger at, again. He, he had one carry earlier, but 27 gets out there, the senior. and make, That's a nice catch. It's a tough catch for a running back. Cross your body. 
All of a sudden, the Argos are flowing up. They, they kind of got caught with a quick snap here, and Hawthorne is going to pick up some positive yardage. You, you can see that right there at the end of the play. Here comes all the UWF guys up to the line of scrimmage. They weren't ready. Yeah, and you can sense that sense of urgency uh, here for Mississippi College as they open it with a, a, a throwing play, and uh, here they go with a quick snap. Uh, they sensing, I mean, they know what kind of offense they have, and the clock continues to tick. We're going to 250 here in the game. Mississippi College has to get a touchdown here. Here we go. Second down and four. Hawthorne back to pass. He's going to get chased. This is where he can be dangerous, and he's going to get outside this time. Cut it up the field. Gets inside of a man before stepping out of bounds. I thought he probably had about 10 more yards. He might be able to go before he gets out. No flags on the field. That's going to be a big gainer. Yeah, and that's what he does. I mean, if you let him get out of that pocket, and Trent Archie's done a great job all night of closing that, but here he finds some space outside and is able to make him pay with his feet. That's, that is the big hitter you mentioned. This is, the, this is what this offense really lives for is to have that kind of play. That's going to pick up 23 yards and move the ball into UWF territory now at the 48-yard line as we are down to two minutes and 17 seconds left to play in this one. The clock continuing to roll. Mississippi College on the move down a touchdown, 21-14 in this ball game. Hawthorne back to throw again from under center. He's got a man open. It's Rotenberry. Rotenberry is trying to make it to the sideline. He will get out of bounds. That's going to pick up about nine on first down. Yeah, the clock will continue to tick, though. Oh, he was they, yeah. they hit him on a little him. crossing route here. He was trying to make it over to the sideline to stop the clock, but got, got hit there before he could get out. So good gain on first down, though, as we're under two minutes to play. Yeah. More passes in this drive than we've seen all game from this Mississippi College offense. And this, this, is, this is what's interesting because a field goal does nothing for you here. This is touchdown or bust. And so if defensively, if you know that, Jamie, does that change your dynamic at all? It does. And, I mean, you don't bring blitz as much uh, here because you know what kind of situation the offense is in as we have a stoppage in play here. But um, this changes things. Definitely on the defensive side of the ball, you may be able to, you know, play zone or fall back if you know they're going to be passing the ball. Trying to figure this out. Maybe a time, was it Mississippi College with a timeout since the clock was rolling? No, the, the official runs back out there. Giving the universal sign for let's roll this, this baby. A little miscommunication. The refs have had a tough night yeah, tonight. It's been difficult. <laughs> a couple missed calls. And, uh, and, and, and as much as issues. occasionally, I try not to, but occasionally you'll get on the ref and I, you know, there may have been a targeting call that was missed. It, it's a job I would not want to do. The difficulty level is through the roof. Um, and you know you're taking abuse from people in the booth, people in the stands, people everywhere, and coaches down on the sidelines. So here we go. Second down, and they mark it at about two after the completion. Hawthorne rolling out. He's got a man. He's going to find him with the pass. Good pursuit, but he's going to pick up the first down and get out of bounds. Another quick one over there to the sideline, and not somebody we've seen a ton of tonight. That is number 10, Jalen Jones. He's had a carrier, too, another one of these running backs. Enough to pick up the first down and move the sticks with 119 left. Yeah, play action on that play. They faked the handoff to Jones and just hit him right off the play action there, able to pick up the first down. Ball is at the 36 now. Choctaw's running out of time. The Argos running out of room to give up here late in this ball game, up 21 to 14. They've scored 21 unanswered, has the UWF team to take the lead after being down 14 nothing, and they're trying to protect that lead now. Hawthorne. Rolls back to pass, dances away. He's not got anywhere to go. And a nice job. There's Trent Archie again, who's had a heck of a football game, finally bringing Hawthorne down. Hawthorne may be hurt at the end of this play. Yeah, he's a little slow to get up. I'm not sure if that tackle was a – if he came down funny. It maybe looked like maybe, maybe the foot in the ground. That's what's interesting to me. I, I blows my mind always, Jamie, that a guy – guys like Barry Sanders, and I'm not comparing Hawthorne to Barry Sanders, but guys like Hawthorne that – cut the way they do, put their foot in the ground and move around. I don't care how big or small you are. How do your ankles and knees and some of that stuff hold up? It, hurt, it hurts my joints just watching some of it. Yeah, it definitely takes a different level of athlete to do that. And, I mean, Hawthorne is a great athlete. I mean, he's done it for, you know, <laughs> years. Yeah. We've seen him do it last year, and he's done it a little, bit, a little bit tonight. And I'm sure he'll have a couple defensive coordinators up late at night oh, in the yeah. GSC as the season continues. He's just a great athlete. It's just that you know, people say there's, there's natural ability to do certain things, and you feel like some players have that. He's one of those guys that has that just ability to, to move in ways that you wouldn't think the body could do as quickly as he does. So On a dime, I, too. I could, I could get deep, deep, deep into my yoga and never do what he's doing. <laughs> and I don't do yoga. Here we go. This is it. 110 left now. Second and nine. 
Ball at the 35. Mississippi College needs a touchdown. If they're going to extend this game at all, they've got to get it done. UWF just needs to stop them to preserve their third victory of the season. Hawthorne back to pass. Deep down the field has a man, and there's going to be a flag down there. He had the guy on the inside, the coverage. T.J. Williams was beat to the inside, it looked like, and he may have gotten into the receiver. Yeah, and that's unfortunate. I mean, he may have been there just a tad early. And I don't think he was going to uh, have a you know, shot had, at that had, ball. Uh, he had an arm on him early, I think. Maybe not right at the end, but right before we kind of picked up that shot. And, and the problem is... When you're when you're the last two guys back there, the you know the back judge has a clear look at it. Yeah, it's not a lot of guys you yeah, can look there, at back there. There's nobody between you, so that's a big penalty. And that's going to put Mississippi College in the red zone here. Yeah, that moves you down to the 20. 104 left. Only took six seconds off the clock, which is another plus for them. They have well, yeah. another timeout left as well. This is it right here. Make or break time, both sides of the football. What do you have on offense, and can your defense answer? Yeah, this is when you find out what that defense and is And come made up of. with a stop. Mississippi College has kind of thrown out everything. That was something we haven't seen, that deep ball down the middle of the field yet tonight. Let's we'll see if they go back to the running game, or do they pass it? They're going to go back to the fullback dive. It is Jones, number 10, up the middle. That's a good gain on first down. But the clock ticks under a minute left now. Yeah, inside handoff. They go back to Jones here. Picks up about four, but as we mentioned, that clock continues to tick. We go into 45 seconds here. As you said, Mississippi College with one timeout left. The Argos have two. But it looks like at this point there's not a situation where the Argos are going to get the football back in any way, shape, or form. Hawthorne rolls out looking for a receiver. The defense is chasing him back. He just chunks it out of bounds. Good job of pursuit, not letting him get loose and forcing a, a, a throw away. Yeah, that's a great job. Great pursuit by the offense or the, the defense for UWF. Hawthorne wanted to get out of there, roll back to his left possibly, but you had Ty Cox bearing down, and then you had, looks like T.J. Kelly, a bunch of yeah, big Gale, guys bearing down uh, on him. Gail Laurent was in there. So you've got now 27 seconds left. This crowd has stayed late, and they are loud here at the end. 27 seconds. What, what that did, too, is that ate some precious seconds off the clock as Hawthorne was dancing back trying to get a receiver open. Third down and three. This is a big play. Obviously, four down territory, so you've got two plays to get three yards, but the time becomes an issue. There's that handoff in the middle again. It is right. He's going to get the first down, and that'll stop the clock momentarily at 22 seconds. They're going to get back on the line quickly. And that clock continues to go. <laughs> One of the UWF players just got pushed and took a dive. Are they going to, are they going to clock it? Yes, they will clock them after three seconds, tick off the clock. So 17 seconds left now. You've got Second and goal from the seven-yard line after the clock play. This is it. This is the ball game. Yeah, <laughs> defense has to step up here. <laughs> Do you bend or break? Here's the issue, though. This is a primarily a running team. Any other team, I'm expecting three throws here because you can manage 17 seconds effectively with three throws and you know a quarterback that knows how to do this. If you run a play, if you if you run the ball here and don't get a touchdown. It's going to be difficult to get back to the line of scrimmage and get another playoff. And they still do have that timeout left. Yeah. They have one timeout left, so they could possibly run the ball and, uh, you know, take that timeout, see what they get here. But uh, they will have to pass it at some point. Uh, 17 seconds left in this ball yeah, game. Unless they run it in on this play. Let's see what the call is. Running back goes in motion. It's a toss sweep to the right. He's got blockers out in front looking to cut it up. But here you go, and he's going to be held in bounds as the clock winds under 10 seconds down to 9, 8. Nope, it'll stop it at 9. Is that the timeout? It'll stop it at 9 seconds. So yeah. now you have, to, you, have to, you have to put it in the air here. Yeah. Third and goal. Third and goal from, we're going to see where they mark this after the play is done. Yeah, that'll be the timeout. So nine seconds left in this ball game. Anything is possible. <laughs> I wouldn't have thought this is where we'd be the way the third quarter went and the way we kind of started the fourth quarter. But nonetheless, here we are. We, we thought this might be a heck of a football game. It certainly turned into that and more. And they put a second back on the clock, so yeah, 10 seconds it. left. Uh, but this is where you want this. I mean, if you had to be in a situation, this is what you would want. I mean, you have Mississippi College. Uh, they're in the red zone, but they're in a passing situation with no timeouts left. So this is a team that, I mean, has come into this game past 22 times total on the year. Uh, so this is going to be foreign to them also. 
and they're going to feel uncomfortable. Um, Hawthorne's going to want to drop back. You have to wonder if he scrambles. If he scrambles, then this might be the last time play. Yeah, it's yeah. going to be the last play of the ball game, and uh, you have to keep him in the pocket. So there's a lot of things you have yeah. to worry about on both sides of the ball, but the defense has to keep Hawthorne in the pocket. And not let him get loose and, and potentially scramble for a touchdown. So here you go. You know, really the opportunity is here for two more plays, depending on how this one goes. Argo's looking to wrap this thing up, and it just turned into a nail biter. Here's the snap. Hawthorne under center back to throw. He's going straight up in the air. Oh, jump ball. Nice job by TJ Williams back there. I think he had hands on it. Thought he might come down with an interception. Only takes five off the clock, so this will be it. Fourth and goal to go from the five with five seconds left. Now anything is a possibility. That, that was clearly a pass play. Good job of getting good position and just go, going up for a jump ball. TJ, that's what you got to do as a DB, knock that ball to the ground if you can't catch it. Yeah, a little bit of hand shake in there, but, I mean, late both, in the ball both, game. Both players. Both, that, parties, yeah, both players. You let that go. But here, I mean, same thing. You can't let Hawthorne get out of the pocket here. And it can't be a straight run play here. That, that would be almost suicide, although who knows what would be called. I got to imagine you're going to let Hawthorne try to do his thing. And he bobbles the snap, takes it, and gets into the end zone. And design run. Wow. And they get it. He did With not. Two seconds left. He did not handle that snap very well. It looked like he was he was bobbling it. The one thing as a defense that I would have been looking for would have been him on a run play. Yeah, that's what they do. I mean, they're that's what they've done all season, accustomed to that triple option, and they get into the end zone. Here's a question for you: If I'm the Mississippi College coach, I might go for two to try to end this thing. The way we've just driven down the field. Definitely something to think about rather, here. Rather, you know, one, give me one play rather than going to overtime. I think you'll see those two corners. He got it. PAT is up and good. And just like that with triple zeros on the clock, we are tied at 21. <laughs> Isn't this the way sports always works? One team dominates. I mean, dominates the second half. You know, scoring 14 unanswered in the second half, 21 unanswered in the game as a total. And it's just the last possession of the game. And, yep. it's, and it's the senior quarterback that we talked about yep. all week long, Dietrich Hawthorne, making it happen at the end with a fourth down and goal from the five with five seconds left. He gets into the end zone, ties this football game. Yeah, and, I mean, they haven't scored since the first quarter and uh, or haven't scored an offensive touchdown since the first quarter. But uh, defense in that situation, uh, and you said it, Will, you I mean you're almost expecting some type of run by Hawthorne. Their, their premier playmaker in that yeah. position, and uh, they put a design run in for him. Maybe they were feeling the defense was, and Coach Dillon was feeling that they were going to scramble him out and give him the opportunity to either run or throw. Maybe, maybe they didn't look at the opportunity that it would be a design run, but here it is again. Look at this. Yeah, he mishandles the snap, but he gets the big fella right out in front of him at running back, and it's really right got into Chandler Ferguson right there, enough where Chandler could get a hand on Hawthorne but couldn't really get to him at all, so... It's a tough one. Coach Pete Shinnick and company now got to figure out, depending on what happens here, the coin toss, and you got to count on your offense to get some points and then count on your defense to come up with a stop. This one, not you know, cl clearly we're going to go to overtime. And, and nothing's been decided, but you feel like we outplayed them for the large chunk of this football game, and here we are where it's basically – Roll the dice in overtime. Yeah, those turnovers early really come back to hurt, especially yeah. that pick six. Uh, that really kept Mississippi College in the ball game. But, um, you know, I mean, that's why you play four quarters and it comes back to bite you there. Yeah, you, and, uh, you, OT. You, you give away that kind of touchdown and you leave at least six points on the field with a missed field goal and a drive that you were at the 10, you know, first and goal to go from the 10 and you, you have a fumble. So there's – you know, t six to ten points that should be on the board that aren't, and you're in a tie game now. Here we go. Devin Gibson out as the captain for this one, along with Cole Rotenberry. Until one team completes. Uh, I, I, <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen. I saw Donovan McNabb once. Not both know. teams will have the possession, the opportunity to possess the ball until one team scores and the other team does not. If the defense possesses the ball, that series is over. Mississippi College will call the coin toss. This is heads. This is tails. You will have the option of offense, defense, or the end of the field that we will play on. What do you call? Tails. Call is tails. It is heads. 
West Florida has won the toss and selected to go on defense. So you heard that. Coach Pete Shinnick going to put his defense right back out there. Interesting. I, but, you know, I guess the situation is, Jamie, if your defense stops, then all you got to do is get a field goal, <laughs> which makes me a little nervous. I'll be it honest. It does come down to I'll one of honest, the, the weaker parts of the game here. I'm all about these Argos, but I'm kind of like, hello. Are we, you know, if, if it comes down to a kick, I may not. Jamie, you may have to tell me what happens because I may not have to be able to open my eyes. I'm going to look the other way. Here we go, though. Put the defense back out there. I'm sure they're fired up and, and feeling a little hacked off right now after giving up that touchdown at the end of the game with no time on the clock. So, you know, you, you hope your defense comes up with a big play. But now, I mean, you know what's coming. Um, no, no, no time restraints here. Mississippi College is going to go back into that triple option with Hawthorne and the, and the stable of running backs. But I think you just go back and play like you were in the third and fourth quarter with, I mean, stopping that run. You pay for four quarters, you get some bonus football coverage tonight. Or if you're in the stands as well. Yeah, this free is, football. Yeah, this is some free football. And, and I, this, you know, two teams coming in, two and one. Both have won their last two after losing the opener. I mean, somebody's going to walk out of here. You know, I know obviously there's things they're going to look at and say we can do better. But somebody's going to walk out of here three and one tonight. And whoever loses, that's a gut punch. Definitely. Going to overtime. Here you go. Starts from the 25. Right with the carry. Going to drag a couple guys before they finally stack him up and stop. There's Josh Smiley in there. The Ty big, Cox yeah, in there Darryl, also. Darryl Wilson, Ty Cox, a bunch of guys getting in on that at the end. But yeah. there's a good push up front, and it really, yeah, just couldn't bring him down from behind. That was Gotell had some jersey, but he got a little forward push. So that'll pick up about four. Second and six now. That'll move the ball just outside the 20. And we'll see. This is this has kind of been the, what we've seen from this Mississippi College offense mainly is that Power inside running game mixed in with some other stuff like Holloway keeping, and he pitches to the ground, but nobody's out there. Archie finally gets out. That's amazing to me. I think they were so worried about Hawthorne inside that the ball got on the ground, and they're going to end up picking up a first down off that play. Yeah, he just picks it up off the ground nonchalant. What? Nobody out on the outside to cover the two guys. And uh, if you had a guy out there, you may be able to recover that you oh. know, fumbled play. But he picks up the first down, and uh, Mississippi College has a new set here. Everybody was pushed back downfield and trying to keep Hawthorne in front of him. That it ends up being a totally broken play that picks up six yards. We've seen just about everything tonight. Ball now at the 15. First down for the Choctaws. They go back to right. He's going to pick up four. And there's a flag coming at the end. We'll see it's right in the middle of the field. I think we're, we're going to get on. Yeah, we're chop block. Chop blocker holding is always held. Big 77 is looking back at the ref and we're looking back at his sideline, kind of wondering what he did wrong right there. That is Cordell Burge. We wait the call. He's a, officials are tired. Personal foul, chop block, offense, number 77 and 73. 15-yard penalty, replay, first down. Wow, 15 well, yards. Wait, if it's two guys, can we have 30? <laughs> can we get 30 yards? He said 77 and 73. That's definitely going to help this defense. <laughs> yeah, that uh, really does. Put it at the 30-yard line. but And this is a long yardage yeah, situation back. for Choctaw again. Yeah, for uh, the Choctaw. That backs you up. And this, As we've seen, when they've been behind the sticks, they have struggled tonight. So a break, a fortunate break on a mistake by Mississippi College, and we'll see if UWF can capitalize on this. And they go to that shotgun again. Yeah, here comes the Trent Archie off the corner, and that ball's thrown up in the middle of the field. If there's somebody behind that, that's probably an interception, but a good job with the pressure. I, I, I kind of suspected Coach Dew was going to dial one up there on first and 30. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, that's just in, in its nature, but uh, inaccurate throw by yeah. Hawthorne there, and the ball is batted up in the air. You know, uneasy times for that for that uh, Mississippi College bench as that ball hung up there a little while. And there you see it. I, I think he, we, we said it, you know, Hawthorne has the arm strength. I wonder at 5'8", 170, if he has the hand size really to control the football, and that's why some of these throws end up a, a little, little bit scattered, right. to say the least. So here you go. Now, after you miss on first down, it's second and 25 from the 30. They go back in the run, and, and I think that handoff there was a problem there. And jumping right in and making a big play. That's that's impressive on the inside. That is Miles Meyer getting in there. Big yeah. 59. Haven't called his name all year. Meyer blew that one up that time. Oh, uh, the handoff. He he never 
Hawthorne put it into Wright's gut, and the ball was like sitting on his elbow, and he he had to stop. Wonder if Hawthorne wanted to pull that ball back out to to the outside to have him make a play, but interesting. Myers, you, Myers made him pay. You wonder at this point if Hawthorne is starting to get a little tired. We saw the pitch onto the ground. We saw that, you know, it, it takes a lot, I think, physically and mentally to run this option game as a quarterback because you got, like, as you just said, do I pull it, do I keep it? And, you know, you get tired, the brain plays tricks on you. So here you go. Now you're looking at third and 25. Here comes the pressure. Have to contain him. They got to contain him. He's got nowhere to go. Gail Laurent with the sack. Another big play. And, again, some pushing after the play. But Gail Laurent, who's been really the defensive star tonight, makes it happen. That's going to force... A fourth down, and really, this is going to be it's going to be a tough field goal. A if they long do. field goal attempt. I mean, you're obviously not going to punt it at this point, but are we looking at about a 47 yarder? This is going to be tough. To miss. They do have a, a, a kicker. That ball? It's yeah, very strong. You're looking at 47. If the ball is spotted around the 30, or is that the? I can't really tell where the ball is right now. Tough to tell from our position. Still saying the 30. So, or did he lose a I couple? I think no, he lost a couple. Yeah, it's yeah, going to so be about a 40 look, yarder. Looking, no, it's like, yeah, you're looking at near 50. That's that's, that's going to be a, that's a 50 yarder. That's going to be Missed no out. good. Wide left as he pulled that. As kickers are prone to do when you're kicking from distance and you're a young kicker and you don't trust your leg strength, you overkick, kind of like when I overswing with a driver. Easy to hook that thing. Yeah, easy to shank it. Uh, I've done that before. But, uh, I mean, long, young, he had a good well, a good it, distance it, on it. Yeah, he had some distance. But you could you can see the spin on that ball. It's not the end over end. It was sideways. Kind of wobbly there. So I couldn't really see with the with the hold even. In the you know Ace Ventura moment, where the laces out or in, Jamie, it doesn't matter at this point because they missed. And so now, do you run a couple plays into the middle and just pick up some yards, make sure you're on the hash you want to be on, and get Alex Virgilio out there, or are you going for a touchdown? I think you run your offense. I mean, this offense, the rushing attack has been great tonight. They're going to go right there to that man again. Newton punishing, takes a big hit as he picks up good yardage on first down. I. It, it's tough to play. It's tough to play the game of football. It's tough to play defense as we take a look at the replay. And that's just, that mean, again, and, and I was just going to say, I have some issues with this Mississippi College team and some of the things that I've seen tonight. That's tough. That's probably the second targeting call we've seen tonight. Or third. That's actually the third. And, and there we go again running through. These guys are coming in high with their helmets or coming in low with their helmets. He led with his shoulder there, but he was clearly going to the head. And head doesn't matter out. because Newton is the man tonight as he goes for five on one carry, probably five and then a little bit more on the next one. They're going to give him eight. And Jervon maybe, Newton is, is the horse. And they'll go with him again, I'm most likely sure here. Yeah, riding the horse tonight. That one going nowhere in a hurry, unfortunately. And that was number 33, able to get in for, for Mississippi College. Jonathan Jones on the blitz there, able to get past Jacquary Jackson, the tight end, and blew up that play. Jervon Newton is at now, he lost a couple there. He's at 102 yards on 18 carries tonight. Heck of a night. For Javon at 100 yards. So that, that brings up third down or second down? Second down and Somebody about he lost down. a couple there. So second down and 13. And I think if you do pass the ball in a situation, you give Austin the option to run it. So you, an yeah, RPO I, type look I here. wouldn't throw the ball here. I would, I would you know, they're, they're stacking up to come with the pressure. They're going to hand it back to Newton again. That's an interesting call because you could see them coming. They were going to run blitz. They were going to jump right into those gaps. How about you fake the handoff there and let Austin get to the outside, potentially? Maybe so. Yeah, somebody just got beat in the middle. Sam just couldn't hold on to his guy. A lot of guy, maybe outmanned there. Timeout has been called, I think, here on the field. Yeah, you get the one in, in extra time. So that is going to bring up third and 16 as two plays have successively, successfully gone the wrong direction. That Actually, Jerron Newton is now, he was at 107 yards two plays ago now he's at 100 so we've lost seven yards on the last two carries but i mean good news i mean you're in field goal position yeah clear field goal range and uh you got to wonder do you set up on one of the hashes here that's, for vigilio that's a, absolutely whatever play you run if you're running the football you're going to put it i, I want to put it where my kicker likes likes to kick from you know right and um or Virgi virgilio I, I would have to say i'm not sure what origin that is 
Yeah. But uh, maybe Italian. That maybe sounds Italian so. to me. Maybe so. But you might see you may see Reed take a knee here, maybe set up on the right hash or left hash, or keep it there, whatever. I don't, I don't think you want to back up any further than you have after a couple, because you know obviously I want this to be as short as possible. But look, look at the Mississippi Collars. I mean, they're they're coming in and they're coming in hard. Clock means nothing here, obviously. It's turned off, so. You can throw it. You just can't make a mistake with the football. All day to throw it. Man in the end zone. Touchdown. Argos win. Kevin Grant. Cool as ice. Austin Reed all day to throw. Grant with the catch. The big fella. Three and one on the season. How about those Argos? As you see it, the whole <laughs> team sprinting the length of the field towards the student section in the band. You got to love this right here. Look at this. The students stayed the whole time. Kevin Grant and company, it's almost like a Lambo leap of sorts all the way down the field. What a football game here tonight. Everybody that's still here going crazy in the end zone down here next to the tunnel where the cheerleaders, you got the ROTC, oh, wow. the Argo Athletic Band up there still playing hard at this point. First overtime game in a while. And it's a heck of a one. Let's look at this. And, I mean, everyone fooled in the stadium. I thought they were going to go with a run play. But, I mean, Kevin Grant sneaks behind that secondary. No one look there. Look at that. Everybody went with that Tate underneath. Yeah, and Grant just ran behind him. Easy. I mean, Austin, you know, we were just saying, Jamie, on the previous play that you could see them walking up to run. You know, they they kind of had to sell out on a run blitz. It had worked for them. Well, they've been being killed by the run all yeah. night. So. And so then you turn around, and Austin Reed just, you know, all, all day to throw. Yeah, and just Kevin Grant. And I think we're going to get wow. another replay Let's take a here. look. I mean, Kevin, Kevin Grant, we saw that catch on the first drive forever ago with one hand. This one not a hard catch. This one a good throw by Austin. Look, you just put some touch, a little air under it. You don't have to do much, and look at that. Calm and collected yeah. in the pocket, just feet moving. In. Austin Reed never leaves the pocket. Just trust his guy there, and Kevin Grant comes through and uh, saves the day for the Argos. Wow. So after, why, you know, really, the story of this overtime turns out to be a big penalty against Mississippi College that puts them back, basically backs them out where they got to kick a 50-yard field goal long enough but pulled to the left. And then the Argos, that's the thing about overtime in college football. It really takes the pressure off you. If the other team doesn't score at all, you kind of know we get a couple yards, we at least got a shot of the field goal to win it as the band plays the alma mater. And instead, you're able to, really go for the jugular and pull that touchdown up. Let's take a look at some of the game stats here. I'm kind of interested. I've, I've kind of been looking at these as we've been dancing through to dive in. We do know, as I said, that Javon Newton had the 100 yards, but look at the balance. Yeah, equal. It doesn't get, <laughs> it doesn't doesn't get, get much better I'm not that. a math major, never was, but it doesn't get uh, you know much more balanced than that as you go for 196 on each side of the ball. The turnovers were costly. One led to a pick six for a touchdown for Mississippi College. The other was a fumble slash could have been an incompletion that killed a drive that had gotten inside the 10-yard line. So really, you know, you take away those two mistakes, this game could be wildly different. I think we saw, Jamie, kind of what we expected to see, which was on one side of the football, the Dietrich Hawthorne show and this running game of Mississippi College, it looked great at times. Uh, a touchdown drive for the first points of the game. And then at other points, it looked like what we said it may look like, which is some sporadic throws from, from Hawthorne and, and the inability to run the ball in certain areas of the field, and the defense was able to stop them occasionally. They did it when it mattered the most on the last drive of the game. They were able to go down and get the touchdown, but in overtime, it, it came back to bottom. Yeah, and it, it really felt like the Argos outplayed Mississippi College for the, the uh, you know, the more portion of this game. And, I mean, they really did, uh, with the exception of the first quarter and uh, parts of the second. I mean, UWF really took over this ball game, And with the exception of that Austin Reed pick, and everything like that. Um, you, I think Brian position. Henry's caught up with a very happy Coach Pete Shinnick down on the sidelines. Let's go down to Brian and, and hear from Coach here post game. Coach, the first overtime game in school history. It was eerily similar to two years ago, 21-14. Unfortunately, they forced the overtime, but you guys made a huge defensive stop there and then just pushed it down and got the, the no, winning score. Phenomenal defense there. I mean, I know they drove. Uh, at the end, but we just felt good. We felt like we were just a little bit away. Uh, great job on the sack there. And then obviously the missed field goal wouldn't have mattered at this point in time. But uh, great team victory. Excited for us. Thank you, fans. They're <laughs> phenomenal. Appreciate it. 
Uh, in that third quarter, you just kind of rode Jervon Newton on that go-ahead touchdown. What what was he doing that was just so effective? Well, I felt like, first of all, I felt our O-line was blocking really well. Staying on blocks uh, with uh, our tight end as well. They gave us the look that we wanted. Newton felt good, and we just wanted to uh, continue it. 2-0 and in conference play. You got a tough Delta team coming in next week. What uh, what are you ready for? Hey, we're just excited to win. 2-0 and at home. We'll be back next week. Thank you, Coach. Congratulations. Back up to you, Will. Thank you, Brian, and a happy coach. They're about to have that celebration, Jamie, that, that song in the locker room. It's going to be fantastic. We will be back with you, as you heard, next week, homecoming, Delta State, right here in Blue Wahoo Stadium. That game kicks a little after 6, 6.05. We'll join you right here on the TV broadcast on Your View, Florida, and Cox Sports TV. On, I think a tape delay for that. And then the radio at 5.30 ESPN Pensacola, our pregame show, as always, starts. We're looking forward to that one. Homecoming is always special. This was special. Jamie, did you know? First overtime game. I, I didn't. And first didn't. overtime win. All right, we'll be with you next week. Stick out with us on the radio for the postgame show coming up next. <laughs>